long have yearned for your tender caress to bind our fortunes. Damn what the stars are, rend my heart open, then your love profess a winding, weaving fate to which we both atone. You flee, my dream come. Scent, berry star, lilac sweet. To dream, raven locks and twisted stormy, of violet eyes glistening as you weep. The wolf I will follow into the storm to find your heart. It's past. And displaced by our ever growing, hardening into stone, amidst the cold to hold you in a heated embrace. You flee, my dream come the morning. Your scent, berries tart, lilac sweet. To dream. Raven locks and twisted stormy of violet eyes glistening as you weep. I know not if fate would have us live as one, or if by love's blind chance we've been bound. The wish I whispered when it all began. Did it forge a love you might never have found? You flee, my dream come the morning. Your scent, fairy star, lilac sweet. To dream of raven locks and twisted stormy. Everybody. Welcome to Roll with Advantage. Welcome to the Adventures of the Salamander Coast. Starting before the Tales of Ever and Everwood. Um, <laughs> so it is great to be here on this wondrous day. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've had a pretty great day. I hope your day has been just as good as mine has been. Uh, but let's go ahead and roll the intro and dive in. It's good, good. It's a, it's a good day for everybody involved right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive in. So as is tradition here on Rolled Advantage, I, the dungeon master, the game master, the GM, the DM, the storyteller, uh, the, the I don't, God, um, never. I am yeah. a vessel, not a creator. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Um, the vessel of God, therefore, is God. No, I do not do the summary. I have my players do the summary. This week on summary is it's me, Gemma. Woo. All right, Gemma. Whenever you're ready, to uh, take it. Take it away. Yeah. Um. So coming off a bit of spice as the party was flushed away into the underdark uh, following the previous session, uh, and the party Great find movie. themselves greeted. Got it right. Oh. <laughs> greeted by swaths of insectoids that are ready to attack. And so they all make a run for it, uh, and were chased up 
a cliff face through across a narrow bridge and through an overrun and abandoned city and larger getting away from the insectoids only to find ourselves straight into a spider's nest and then get through that into toxic spores and so after that fun little tour of how absolutely shit the underdark is uh and the party also thoroughly exhausted uh we reach a large cavern and at one distance there is a drider and to the other there is a drow atop a lizard mount both catch sight of the party but choose to turn around rather than approach and it is during this moment that suni receives a message from kiyothi uh, checking in on the party as she was evidently separated from us and is still up on the surface. And so with no real other choice, the party continued to move on, hearing a second message uh, from the drow that was in the cavern. He provides some instructions to get to a grassy grove nearby and says to meet him there. Uh, with one final little complication before we get there, as there is a battle going on with various different Underdark locals, but the party is able to largely give them the slip, only really having a pair of driders aware of their presence, uh, but they were unable to follow through the narrow passages that the party went through to escape. And so we find the drow man who introduces himself as Alton Naranath of House Millithor. Uh, and his little lizard mount, M. We love M. Uh, and he explains that the lives of drow men hold very little value in the Underdark, and that they are fated to be fodder for either the battlefield or to feed the matrons. And so he and 11 others had tried to escape, but he was betrayed, or that all of them were betrayed, uh, by a woman who was uh, saying that she'd come with them to help them. And Alton was the only one to survive from the group. And he says that he does know a route to the surface that would take around a week's travel and offers to take us after some needed rest, uh, which is proven as very well needed as Ajax is even unable to fulfill his first watch before passing out. Uh, during that night's rest, Carousella finds herself again in a strange dream. However, this time the other individual there is aware of her presence and introduces himself as the ancestor of Bianca, Ellen Durbanea, although not Ellen Bianca Crisis yet, but you know. Um, and so uh, the two of them talk, and it is basically said that they're both dreamers, individuals that can see into the past through their dreams, and that he was also stabbed by a blade of Ajan. Uh, and so Elendar asks if uh, we will help guide him through the Underdark. Uh, and promises to leave a gift for Carousella at his final resting place at, in return. And so the party all now rested. Uh, Carousella lets the others know of the dream, and Alton presents three possible routes to the party to get through the Underdark, uh, but each having uh, different Underdark creatures that would pose a problem through them. And so the decision is made, and the party set out to meet some cool Toa. Uh, and yeah, that was that. Alrighty. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So, before we move further at all, there is something that, that happens. As all of you are preparing to leave um, in the morning, just beginning to stir, I had drawn attention to it a bit um, last session, but Caracilla, you had noticed the intrinsic magic of the cloak enhance. But the rest of you notice something else um, entirely. It's not just that the magic has grown stronger and is more embedded in Caracilla and in in uh, just a way to increase her magical abilities. Some of you begin to recognize this, this feeling that is unsettling at first, but then grows and changes. Sometimes when you look at Carousilla, there is this light feeling you get this trustworthy feeling, this feeling of comfort and joy. 
it's very strange. It's the only other time that some of you have felt like this, Ajax. You're removed from this um, because you were not around when this person was here. But for the rest of you, a very similar feeling you had when you had encountered... <laughs> Oops. Look, I forgot her name. Oh, that's not good. Why the fuck are there so many NPCs? <laughs> um, the lady... It... Because the campaign's been going on for two years, Joe. Uh, the, the lady who you met on the boat, she was really pretty. It was... Yeah, the one that we met at Tears Tear or whatever. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. I don't know her name either. Oriana! Ah! <laughs> yes, here we go. Boom. It is very similar to the feeling you felt around Oriana. Oriana's presence, though, was this intoxicating beauty. This feeling akin to, to strong passion. Carousel is as different, but it's still a feeling like that. Just being near her, you feel calm. You feel a sense of home even though you're so far away from it. It's peaceful. You can see the cloak glimmer and to a degree shine in this dark, dank cave system. And Caracilla, it's something you notice that every once in a while, someone might look at you and just their hardened expression softens a little bit, looking in your direction. Some of the tension people have on their bodies begins to dissolve a little bit, just being around you. Your natural aura as a person now, with the connection you have to the cloak, makes you not just a presence when you play your music or when you talk with people, but just being around people now has a positive effect on them and the way they perceive the world. And with that, I would like to let everybody know the Gleeman's cloak that Caracilla wields has gone from an awakened state to an exalted state as the Gleeman cloak is in its final form now. And Caracilla not only can prepare spells like a, uh, as a bard, but as a like a druid or cleric uh, as a full caster, but also um, the Gleeman's Cloak gives her a plus two bonus to spell save DC and spell attack bonus. So she is a dangerous woman. Yeah, she's a force. <laughs> oh, and damn. Damn. So with that, Caracilla, you feel good. Even in this dark area, the cloak seems to cling to you extra tightly to follow your movements even closer. You and the cloak finally seem connected. And as you reach for one of your daggers, as you reach into one of the pockets, you don't find it. Instead, you find a note crumpled up piece of parchment. Do you read it? Yeah. Okay. As you pull it out, you sort of uncrumple it. All it says is, I can't believe you actually did it. Aaron Marilyn. Cute. with that as all of you prepare yourselves for the travel ahead you can see Alton approaches atop N and unless you all have any questions he will start to guide you on your way nope. no, uh, I think Ajax is just you know what he always does be near the front. Keep an eye out for danger. Okay. Alrighty. Sounds good to me. So, as all of you exit your small camp and enclosure, 
being at the camp, there was that feeling of safety and security. Stepping out into the Underdark as a whole, however, doubt begins to creep in again. As all of you. Now have to make your way. Alton leads you through a narrow corridor. And you can see that every once in a while he departs um, over longer stretches to scout ahead just a bit. And he returns every single time. And eventually he returns after about two and a half hours of walking and says, All right. Ahead, the cavern begins to open up. That means that we'll be incredibly close to the Kuatoa's domain. It might be another day or two of walking, and then we'll be on their doorstep. I suppose my question is to all of you, is are you ready? I don't know how more prepared we can be, honestly. We're ready to keep fighting, and we're ready to make our way out of here. Whatever it means. All right. Do you know of any dangers we might encounter on the way there? Yes. Um, there are many. Um, even though it is the Kuatoa's domain, that does not mean that we might not run into other denizens of the Underdark. We could run into a traveling party of drow. In fact, the area we'll be traversing through used to be a drow city that was overrun by the Kuatoa and their um, beliefs. I know it is strange to hear, but the more Kuatoa there are, the stronger they are. Not because they're great fighters, but whatever divinity they were created with, they have an ability to pull things into reality that were not there before. What do you mean divinity they're created with? Are they born or do they get made by a thing? In all honesty, I do not know. The most I have ever learned is how best to kill them before their beliefs overwhelm you. I mean, that would be useful to know as well. Oh. They are not very strong, and they are not very hardy. But there are many of them. They are unrelenting to a degree. Typically, when me and my soldiers would be attacked by Kuatoa, the best thing to do is stand your ground, kill as many as you can, as quickly as you can, and eventually they'll scatter and run away. But the moment you start to run, their numbers start to stack up more and more and more and more. And there was one time I... where only me and a few others made it out. It, this terrible thing they conjured. It, it was a writhing mass of stars and and flesh and eyes from a different world. Uh, is that possibly like in Bianca's history of God's class potentially, does anything sound remotely like 
digging through her brain, anything seem on par with that, or is that not something that anyone um, who went to a certain school or anything would have knowledge of? Yeah, I I'm gonna say your knowledge is more of things that are closely related to um, your blood hunter knowledge. So I think things like undead or demons or fiends, you would be really knowledgeable in because that's what you were primarily concerned with. Mm -hmm. Things like aberrations and specifically things from, Bianca would know of the existence of the astral sea, but creatures that exist in that realm. Yeah, but she wouldn't not. really pick up on like yeah. where it's from or any, okay. Yeah, yeah, Just no, checking. she, from hearing that, I, I don't think she has enough knowledge to even make a check about it. Okay. Is there any possibility that can be reasoned with? The Kuatoa. Well, you seem intelligent enough. It could happen if you're able to convince them you're a god, perhaps. Well, maybe. We have a pretty convincing person who speaks their language here. Never had to convince someone I'm a god before, though. We do all have very flashy magic as well. So of us have spoken to gods I as well. I'm technically the daughter of one, too. That? I know that's a weird thing then. to say without certainty, but yeah, I think we could... Might be able to swing it, but... Show off some of our flashy skills and... Who knows? If that is what you plan to do, then I should not be around while you do it. The moment they see a trial, they'll be inclined to attack. Are will you they... Will disguise they know? yourself. And will they know the difference between drow and half drow? Well, I have horns and um, a tail, but... I, I do not mean any offense by this, believe me. Um, but there are not any drow underneath the surface that look the way you do. None taken. Just didn't know. Um, and um, I, I guess I do not follow to disguise oneself. I, I feel like that is... I don't like that idea. But you do seem to be someone that's able to stay hidden relatively easily. That is true. You could at least stay by. Me and M could do that. This harness was specially made to be able to suspend me while M is on the ceiling. So I can that's really fucking cool. <laughs> Give me one of those. <laughs> we should get those. Thank you. I, I think it is very practical and incredibly useful. Oh. Let's just say now that is time do... to see. Let's just say that we do convince them that we're gods, even if that works out. Um does that mean that they're just gonna let us through? Or are we just going to end up in another shitty situation? If that is what happens, um, I think you would end up needing to challenge and defeat the other gods they worship. Perhaps. That sounds funny. But other gods that they can conjure to be theoretically real gods in a sense. Are they gods or are they just creatures that they think are gods? Do we not? We probably don't. That's fine. 
I suppose um, it just depends on what your definition of a god is. I would oppose I that ours would be different. Something that would be more powerful than us. Godliness aside. If we're unable to best to them, then that's a problem whether they are gods or not. If we somehow bested these gods, would that buy us passage for the rest of our way home? Well, that and an army of Kuatoa that would believe you are their god. Yeah. Hmm. Get on that army, we would have to stand for Kuatoa army. We're gonna fight a Vala with a fucking Kuatoa army. Yeah, essentially, we'll turn to Bianca and say, Well, as fun as that sounds, I don't know how good of a look that is once we get out of here. It's uniting, it's decent enough a look. The goal is to get through here with as little bloodshed as possible. We have to fight. Well, so be it. I don't think we should go out challenging their gods if we don't have to. It, yeah, so we're kind of either trading, fighting Kuatoa, and potentially maybe running into their gods, maybe being able to avoid it, or convincing them we are gods, and then challenge their gods in order to not fight Kuatoa. Who do we want to fight? Oh, we won't necessarily need to fight the gods, will we? we it's only a bit... Them. Not to be seen as gods ourselves, right? Mm. It's only that the challenge could be posed. Um, I think that... Am I misunderstanding? Uh, um, I, I, I am not an expert in their belief system, but... I think it would be reasonable to believe that if you are to challenge a member of their pantheon, then they would wish to see that you're stronger than they are. I think we're getting hung up on a lot of hypotheticals. We have to see how the first encounter goes. If we end up fighting them, then we have no chance on proving ourselves. Otherwise, the other thing. You would need and... to prove your strength to them anyway, before they even believe oh. you. Well? By the way, we're walking and talking, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. We're probably, whatever plan we have, is not going to go the way we plan it anyway. Mm. It never does. Well, I'm just saying, if one thing leads to another and we end up having a bunch of fish minions behind us when we get out of here, I don't know how we're going to explain that to Liliana. Easy. We went looking for the syndicate, got thrown down into the Underdark, made our way out, ran into fish people, proved that we were gods. They follow us now. I mean, yeah, I would just be honest. I think she would respect it. Too. But, very the force we have is better than nothing. I mean, I I guess if no one sees a problem with it. Okay. I mean, what is she going to do? Going to challenge us with our fish army behind us? <laughs> I don't think so. Our army's bigger than your army. I, I think it's more so uh, we can utilize these people less of a let's get them acclimated into this society. And then they can go home when we're done. So. I mean, if this even happens, they probably might probably not surface, can. realize there's sun up there. And just return back down. Yeah. The main thing they need to do is just let us pass, really. Anything else on that is a bonus. And so... Actually, why don't we just try that? Talking to them to let us pass? I imagine that'd be the first route. 
<laughs> oh, that's too easy. Come on. It's Gotta be a little more easy. Would you like to do something other, Suni? Oh, I don't know. It just never seems that easy, so... I think we should give that a shot. Alright, well... Obviously, Carousel will be leading the way on that one. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> it's tough to be a god, though. <laughs> it's just gonna be fun in my head this whole it's time. It's tough oh. to be a god. Yeah, flush. Uh, Ajax is still looking out for <laughs> for bullshit that might attack us on the way to where we're heading. Yeah, make a perception check. Oh okay, Doki or Pachoki, I'll do that. Okay. 25. So, as you are walking throughout the uh, cavernous um, pathways yeah. of the Underdark, you do catch a couple of things. For one, um, let me go ahead and as you move in, right, as I had said, the, the cavern was narrowing and narrowing and narrowing. And eventually, um, as Alton said, it opens up much wider. Um, and as it does open up to a much wider degree, you see something uh, very similar to this. Right, where every once in a while you can see something that's almost like paved roads or small buildings that are collapsed, made from uh, deep, dark stone. There are braziers that are burning and lit as you walk through. You take your time pacing yourself. And Ajax, as you look around, Two things you notice. For one, there are, every once in a while, eyes that sort of peek out from a ledge, maybe a hundred feet up. Just shimmering sort of yellow eyes that just peek and see you. And then as soon as you look at them, they peek back behind the ledge. And you can hear this of whatever creature that was moving away. Every once in a while, you can also hear this sharp tapping noise. Different than the drider legs, but... Ooh, please don't be what I think it is. It starts quiet. Initially, does it? Never mind. I'm not gonna ask these questions because this is me being meta. I, I, yeah, continue. Sorry. But eventually, the noise grows from that ticking sound to almost, almost a a very simple string of notes. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. And Ajax, it is it is barely audible. Just with your 25 right there, you can hear it. You have no idea how far away it is, how close it is. It is echoing, and it's something you're barely catching. Question. Those are the two things you notice. Uh, because I'm bad at remembering the the drow's name is uh, how do you say it again alton alton uh Ades is gonna hold up his hand for everybody kind of stop he's gonna look to alton and whisper i hear tapping followed by humming some notes music does that sound familiar? It's not good that you hear it. I was hoping we'd be able to avoid it, but... and might be inevitable. One of the... homes 
of the deities of the Kuatoa is called the Slumbering City. Thousands of Kuatoa live in that abandoned keep. It's a, once a, a, a drow fortress that's now been solidified in crystals. One of their deities, Shambayan, their home is there. Shambayan the Slumbering. So many of the Kuatoa put their faith into that one deity that now even the archpriests believe that he's too powerful. So thousands of Kuatoa sing, praying to keep him sleeping. They say you only hear those notes if you need to go through the city. Like a call from the deep. Ajax raises an eyebrow. I would assume, because this conversation probably everybody could have heard, mm -hmm. right? Maybe? Yeah. Ajax will kind of just look back at everyone like, give him the face of, like, do you hear it? Does anyone else hear it? Yes, Ajax points it out. All of you hear. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Kind of catchy. Mm. For a few seconds. Envy. I was hoping no one else heard it. No, I hear it. And it is, it is, I want to stress how incredibly faint it is. You're only picking up on it now because of how quiet it is in the area that you're in. Um, and Ajax pointing it out. But for most of your journey, um, for the rest of the day, it'll probably sort of fade out and you won't be able to hear it at all. Fade out suggesting we've gone past it or? No, that it is so incredibly faint that if you're not actively looking for it in that moment, it just, it, it, the ambient noise around you overcomes it. Mm. Just it. the dripping of water is louder than those notes. Well, seems that we know where we're heading at least. Lead the way. All right. And he, um, Alton nods and he'll continue on the way. Now, mm -hmm. all of you end up walking throughout this, ca this cavern, these sometimes paved roads, sometimes back to um, cramped caves and then back to these paved roads of marvelous cities that used to exist. Eventually, though, what I would say after um, another seven or eight hours of walking, you can see a large ravine begin to grow in front of you. Past the large ravine, you can see this massive city spanning miles, buildings and houses stacked on top of each other, cascading waterfalls and rivers flowing throughout the entire place. Thick layers of slime and mucus covering parts of the buildings. A home that has been taken over. As Alton stops, and looks from the ravine edge. That is Ched Nassad. It was a great city many, many, many years ago. The Kuator destroyed the walls.
without belief. In order to get where we need to go, we need to go through that city. There aren't many of them there. I've done scouting missions through there. We'll probably be able to go four or five days of travel without running into any of the Kuatoa. Resting only when needed, but once we get to the end of the city, There is a drow outpost that we can stay at. But after that outpost, what you need to understand is there will not be another chance to rest until we get to the surface. And how many days after? Three. I know. It is going to be an incredibly difficult journey, and by the end of it, you will be exhausted. But if we stop and rest, if only two of us are awake at a time, and they swarm us, before you even have a chance to draw your weapons and fight, there might be a... creature of their own belief that has come about. So we have five days of travel. Hopefully all of you will be able to gain your bearing in the time throughout the city. And then when we reach the drow outpost, we'll be able to rest one more time there. And then three days and of you're travel. Sure. You're sure that the drow outpost will be safe? Wouldn't be risking running into any scouting parties or the like. There is... For many drow, they do not like to go where great losses were had. Many of us are incredibly prideful. They would rather avoid an embarrassing splotch on the past. I'm fairly confident we won't run into any drow here. That's good at least. No offense. I understand. Well, if all of you are ready, be careful in this next part. It's Rather treacherous. Just watch your footing. Okay. All righty. So, with that, are all of you ready to descend down? You pretty much have to, like, kind of, like, shimmy with your back up against the wall on this incredibly narrow, maybe, like, four or five inch um, outcropping and sort of shimmy down a wall in order to get to a, a flatter plateau that will lead you into the city. Fun. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's go. Alrighty. But if uh, nobody has anything, then you will begin to make your way to the city of Ched Nassan. So, eventually getting down to the bottom of the cliff. No skill checks necessary as, as long as you take your time, everything is fine. There are a few moments of panic as those of you who might have a, a little bit of an aversion to heights as you look down into the great expanse below and panic for a moment, but then immediately pull yourselves back up, focus on the ceiling above, and push yourself to the end. 
You make your way to the end. Vietnam flashback to when he almost fell down into that thing in the Underdark the first time and like disappeared from existence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good times. Good times, yeah. Suni, <laughs> Suni stops for a moment, and whoever's next to him kind of has to nudge him to get him to go again. <laughs> I'll say, uh, I'll say, Ajax is next to him, and Ajax just kind of puts his hand out in front of him, says, "Come on," and kind of just holds his hand there so that he can't fall. Oh, <laughs> cuties! Oh, I love the, it. The Baba Boys, I love it. <laughs> okay, the fighters. Okay. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> okay, okay. But eventually, no more wandering of underdark passageways. As eventually, crossing onto the plateau, you now have a clear shot to a, an obliterated wall that will allow you to traverse into the city of Chednasad. Ooh. They got purple lights. So, let's go to that pyramid. As you <laughs> make your way in, Alton reminds all of you once again, it should be four or five days of travel. Try and stay as quiet as you can during the time we are awake and during rest. You never know when something might be watching you. And with that, he will start to lead all of you throughout the city. So, um, as he said, and he was being truthful about this, the first several days of travel are quiet. There are no encounters. There are no monsters that are there. It is entirely peaceful travelings. There are a couple of close calls where there might be, during one of the um, the watches, there might be a scouting Kuatoa that almost stumbles upon your camp, but Alton is an expert. He picks the good hiding places where they don't look. Um, my only question to all of you is, as I said, um, the... As I said, as Alton, I just want to make it incredibly clear to all of you that this, these rests that you're getting right now and the one at the drow outpost, those are going to be the last ones that you're going to have, the last long rest that you're going to have for the next probably three days of traveling for your characters. So that means by the time you get back to the surface, all of your characters will have suffered three points of exhaustion, okay? So, I, I say that because A, I want you to be cautious of what resources you're expending after the drow outpost, and B, um, if there are any conversations, whether they be solo, no, like, duo, group conversations you wanted to have, this period right now and at the drow outpost would be the time before you really don't have time for that for a couple of sessions. So, my question is, is there anybody that wanted to have any conversations over watches over the next four or five days um, that uh, that you wanted to have before um, you go into that sort of sequence there? Mm. No pressure, you don't have to, you don't have to come up with anything. I just wanted to to put the offer out there. It's not a conversation, but it was something that I was planning on doing. And I feel like it's probably still a good idea to do it now rather than later. Um, okay. You might die. Maybe. We'll see. Um, <laughs> just, I suppose, also knowing that, like, Karis is going to have to be relaying shit to Elendar as they're going as well. Um, and also just to keep the shit going. Um, Carousel was gonna ask Bianca, do you have a little looky at the little Baijan dagger, provided she still has it, which she does, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she can give it to you. 
Yeah. Um, it will be when they were, I guess, resting up as much as they can as they're traveling through this place. And really, all she's trying to do is to get the whole thing to be less of a painful mystery, I suppose. Um, especially if it means that when she is talking to Elendar, it's taking a lot of time. Like, she's waking up a lot later than naturally would. And so basically, all she wants to do is just sit it down. She doesn't want to touch it just yet. But basically, just focus in on the magic I guess she already knows of it from where it had stabbed her. Focus in on that and then try and connect that to the dagger, assuming that, you know, that's where all the dream shit's coming from. It's from the power of the dagger. And just if she can get a better arcane understanding of that, she could hopefully get a bit more, I guess, control over the whole dream thing. Okay. Um, Try to think. As you are peering into the dagger, sort of sitting it down in front of you, trying to bridge that connection. It doesn't seem like Well, go ahead and make a well, go ahead and make a uh, charisma check. Okay. Your your spell casting modifier here. About 23. 23. Okay. You believe um fairly confidently that the dagger is no longer the anchor. The dagger isn't the thing that is giving you the power now. The pain you feel, that twisting you feel in your stomach and the dagger, they seem disconnected. The dagger is still, you know, magical item. It still has magical powers. But in terms of this connection you have to the realm of dreams, that seems to be something that is an inward connection now, not an outward. Right, right. And you believe that fairly confidently after a 23. You must start looking in and asking the big questions. Like, who are you? And what do you want? Are we, like, not trying to solve a stomachache issue anymore? It is power now. <laughs> <laughs> but my bitch still hurts, though. <laughs> my tummy, my <laughs> tim tam. <laughs> Man. But no, that's all. That was just a point of curiosity. Okay. I didn't know if I had anything to it. That's fair. Um, I will say, Carousilla, one of the things that you start to realize over the course of these four or five days is delving into the, I would say maybe the first day you do that before you had to rest. After that first day, you realize that delving into that dream world is no longer something you're forced to do. It's no longer something that just happened. Now that you've realized that connection is inward and you have had a conversation with a fellow dreamer, you start to realize it's something that you can tap into, something that you can, when you go to sleep, you can try and connect to as opposed to being thrust in. Um, it still is uh, consuming to your psyche. But whenever you don't delve in, you do wake up on time. And there's no, um, what's the word? Uh, to be lethargic. <laughs> there is no Legarthy. <laughs> That's definitely not it. it lethargy? Lethargy? Yeah, Legarthy. <laughs> Legarthy. <laughs> My favorite United States president. Um, so you feel no, I can't even, 
Legarthy. I forget, I forget what the word was. <laughs> <laughs> lethargy? Lethargy, thank you. You feel no lethargy when you wake up on nights when you don't go into that world. Right, cool. However, then, I suppose my question to you is, is do you delve into the dream world in this city? Yeah, I mean, shit, I guess she'd have to at least the first night, because she didn't know where the fuck they were going um, when she originally talked to Yeah, I talked to know. my grandpa. Yeah, <laughs> and so she'd have to give that update, and I guess would also probably, before that night, get as many details as she can of the route uh, from out and and just try and relay as much to him to be as helpful as she can be. Okay. So, once again, the chimes. As you delve into the world of dreams. The world you see around you is still tinted in blue hues, as it had been before. An ethereal nature to the existence around you. But instead of seeing a desolate, corrupted wasteland of a city, you see what, in all reality, is a bustling home of many, many drow living their lives, trading, buying, selling. It looks like any other city would on the material plane. This could be Bromsgroff, if not just a little darker and the lighting is a little different. But there is something that you notice upon your traversal through the city in looking for Alindar. Upon making your way to the gate, not the hole in the wall that you had gone through, but making your way out of the city, the most direct path to where you were and where Alindar may be, you can see there is a procession currently happening at the gates. You can see many, many, many drow soldiers, house captains, and arachnomancers, and riders gather at the front gate. An army that is probably the size of the entire population of Maester lining the streets. This royal procession prepared for a visitor. The chimes begin to fade slightly. You can feel this flicker to the connection you have. I'd like you to make a concentration check. Oh. Seven. Oof. Okay. I'm not good at these. <laughs> so, with a seven, flicker. The world around you fades. You're back in a ruined keep. Flicker. You're back in the world of dreams. Flicker back in the place you were. Flicker back in the world of dreams. It is incredibly jarring and incredibly painful. The dissidence happening in your mind from one realm to the other and back and forth and back and forth. You feel this pulsing migraine begin to happen. You can feel this warm stickiness beginning to run down your ear and your jaw as you tap and look. Blood. And the last thing you see as the gates open 
this mighty caravan of drow soldiers, of powerful archmages, driders, and other horrid creatures, but leading them all is a woman. A woman whose visage has not changed at all from this time in a bygone era to when you saw her in the sewers of Bromsgrav. You can see matron Malice Baneer moving throughout the city. People bow and genuflect in her honor. You can see this devious smile curling across her face. But that is not what removes you from this world of dreams you live in. As she smiles, looking at all of her adoring followers, her eyes graze the crowd as she looks to you. She looks directly at you. And when she looks at you, that pain grows deeper. That twist in your stomach intensifies as she sees you. She sees Caracilla. And all she says is, you are not supposed to be here. A snap, falling. You jump awake in your camp, having been woken up. Now, while that was happening, before Caracilla jolts awake, Um, let me see. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to roll a D6 twice, and that's who we're going to determine who's on watch in that moment. Um, so one, uh, one Bianca, two Alton, three Ajax, four Cecily, five Suni, six free roll. Three Ajax. It's three again. One, Bianca. Bianca and Ajax. Okay. Um, so the two of right. you are on watch in that moment. Um, this is the final watch, as all of you are preparing to get up. All of you see, the two of you see, sorry, the two of you see Caracilla stand up. So I was, uh, this place is very... Caris? Yes? Uh, what? You just said straight up. I th Are I you okay? I thought I heard something. Where? No. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I did, and you can see she starts to quickly walk towards the exit. Hey, hey, Bianca's gonna Where reach for going? her hand to try and, like, get her from just, like, because we're clearly in, like, a confined, like, not supposed to be running amok kind of area, Correct. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. She's it gonna is, try and reach for her. Okay, all right. And grab her. Um, go ahead and, uh, um... Uh, make a dexterity check. D20 plus your dex mod. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, check. 18. 18, okay. That beats Caracilla's AC. So as you go, you grab at her wrist incredibly quickly. You can see she tries to jerk away and she says, let me go. What? No, what is, we're not supposed to be going anywhere. What is wrong? You need to let me go right now. I need to get out there. I need to, I saw something. Who, I need to go. What, no, That's what did you see? That's incredibly stupid. I saw Malice. Who? One uh, of the Forsaken, you idiot. I saw Malice. Okay. Would Caracilla talk like that? Um. No, and at that moment, snap, Caracilla, you... <gasps> 
You see Caracilla just start to gasp for air. You can see blood begin to pour out of her ears oh and a small God. nosebleed begin to curl down the side of her face. As Caracilla, you're now in control of your body. Uh, hey, hey, and I'm gonna like try and wipe some of the blood from like her face and everything and try and be like, what? Are you okay? Are you here? Is this Caracilla? Hello? I hope so. Um, and she probably like look around at the fact that she's not where she was sleeping. Are you? Just you just tried to bolt. You said you saw a mouse and then called me an idiot. <laughs> well, first of all, you're not an idiot, Ajax. Um, but I, I did see malice though. Where and when? I'm going dream? to get Suni. Ajax is going to walk back to Suni because she's bleeding. Uh, so she obviously needs someone to heal her. I can heal myself. I'm a big girl. No. <laughs> no, there's bigger issues right now. Okay. <laughs> Suni will heal Karasilla. Once <laughs> awoken. <laughs> <laughs> we'll also just wake up everybody so we can have everybody be updated and on the same page as Caracilla, we set her down wipe away the blood and try and figure out what the heck just happened okay. yeah, Ajax is gonna run over there and just shake Suni awake uh, I'm so sorry Suni um we need uh, Cecily mm -hmm. yeah. we need every everyone needs to wake up Alton wake up Alton immediately stands like he wasn't just <laughs> meditating. What's going on? Not sure yet. We're trying to figure that out. Well, I feel like we could have waited till morning at least, but um, I understand. Um, I was trying to get back to Elendor to update him on where we're going, what's happening, but uh, I wasn't able to reach him. Instead, the city was well, alive for starters, and she'll kind of like describe the procession and everything she okay. saw then. Um, and it was headed by Malice. And she saw me, I suppose, and I don't know what she did, but she evidently did something if I was up. Yeah, you shot straight up and. You told us you saw, like we said, you saw Malice and that you needed to go? Yeah, you started walking into the city by yourself. I'm glad you stopped me at least. Um, it's also worrying to think that now she knows we're here too. But that was the past, right? Off. That wasn't now? She seemed like she recognized me, at least. She shouldn't have. At least if it... Well, if it was any time ago, I mean... When we saw Malice, it hasn't even been a year that's passed. The city's definitely been destroyed for more than that. And I wouldn't be surprised if... Dark One, being who he is... Malice perhaps has some similar temporal disconnection. I'm honestly, guessing as much as you are. Either way, it was she was bound to find out eventually. I'm sure. Hmm. Imagine the Baneers are from a city near here, right? Um, I mean, near is a relative term in the Underdark, but, um, I would say Arendelin from this point is maybe three or four weeks travel, so it is close relative to the rest of the Underdark. Menzo Baranzan is probably four or five months' journey, and that's the largest city in the Underdark. Um, 
But we do know the 13 have access to, I guess, traveling in the in-between. I can't even remember what it was officially called. Uh, so Malice could, I don't know if she would be able to bring an army with her or anything, but she could, she could technically get anywhere as quickly as she wants. Also hmm. sure. Maybe if we're all rested, maybe we should just get moving now. Not as good a time as any, I suppose. If all of you are feeling rested, then we can start moving. Where did she see you again? It's towards where the gates are. Oh. I'm assuming that it must have been the main gate. It was rather large, correct? Yes, it was was procession they normally like to make it as fancy as possible that's at least two days away from where we're at now so there's time the city ahead is ahead of us behind us okay. that is the gate that she would go through if she was arriving from Arendelin so even if she does come within the city it would take a fair bit of time for her to find us even with all Do of we... her Spiders. Do we think she control your body, Arisola? Is that her? The smells have those capabilities? I don't know. Um, I can say I myself did not serve under a Bainier, Malice, um, or any other, and I had never traveled to Arendelin before. But word travels. Um, it was said that There was one point in time when an assassination of uh, another house failed in Arendelin. The Baneers failed. And as their house was going to be struck down, the family who lived initially in their dreams, they... Well... The servants that were alive said they saw them wake up from their slumber and... All of them, they... And he doesn't finish. There's no way of knowing if two things are connected, but I thought it was worth the saying. If Malice is a forsaken, as you said, it's not out of the realm of possibilities that she was able to take over your body. We need to get moving. In your dream, if she was at the gate, and she took over your body, she knows exactly where we are. Most likely. But I'll also add that... I'd have to go back. I need to get Elendar out of his place, otherwise I don't know what happens. Maybe he's able to do it alone, but... I'd... I'd much rather have a bit more certainty there. Back to the game. I think she means back to dream. Both in a way. I could 
possibly move past it, but I don't know how long that would take. And if Malice is already, well, already aware that she should be looking, then might also be a problem. Is this, this was... our? Sorry. I think we were going to ask the same question. If this was yeah. our last sleep before yeah. the three yeah, days. We were. Oh, um, it was the first, yeah, because Carousel okay. did this on the first one. Okay. okay. Well then, we can let Carousello dream tomorrow night. Maybe. Mm. Maybe you should. Second night. Tonight. I don't know. It's up to you. You can do whatever you want. Maybe you should dream. The next night, if something happens, you need to recover. At least we have the next day to do so. So second night, which is tonight. Tonight, the second yeah. night. <laughs> this night. Clarifying. The current night incoming. That. I don't know. Just chain me up, make sure I don't go anywhere, I suppose. That could hurt. I don't think we'll be doing that, but. Um, anyway, in the meantime, I, we should get going. Alrighty. So with that, all of you gather your things. And you leave. You travel another day, eventually resting in a second spot on the second night of five. And as I understand it, Carousel, you're going to be attempting to dream again. You hopefully skirt around the city as much as she can this time. Okay. Alrighty. I will say, uh, Bianca, during our time down here, um, would probably, I don't know if it's, like, necessarily meditative, but, like, I think she, and, like, not quite connecting to the space, because it's, like, not really connected to her in particular, but just, like, half of her lineage being from the Underdark, I think she would just be, like, um, taking in the surroundings and trying to, like, learn from it as much as she can about like you know her lineage if there is anything to like um that pops out to her or anything not that it's like super relevant to today or like outside of everything but just a personal thing because uh she probably doesn't want to come back here after this you know maybe like a one and done never come back to under dark kind of vibe so okay yeah yeah, so as you are making your way throughout the uh, the city of uh, Chednasad, you do take in different little bits of information uh, and, and styling of architecture or little bits of history that you can find when you find them, um, just to sort of build up that knowledge that you have of the Underdark, as opposed to this scary thing that you just don't understand at all, trying to build up that understanding. Um, I'd say no check necessary, it's just something passively you do and something that Bianca can call back on in the future. Okay. Wait. Alrighty. A second dream is had. In this one, you attempt to move around the corners of the city, hoping to avoid any incursion. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you fall asleep, chimes return. That peaceful hue of blue returns. Wandering through the plane of dreams you find yourself in. City of life once again. A city on edge, though. A city of tension. A far cry from what it was when you rested here the previous night. But following your own advice, you skirt around the city as much as you can and eventually do make your way out of a, a side of the city. You follow the same cliff ledge up that you had before, uh, that you had gone down initially, in hopes to find a Lendar. You do, as you are traveling, end up seeing a few packs of Kuatoa 
that linger in the corners and the shadow, the crevices. You can see they look down upon the city. You can see what they're thinking. They have ideas. Their eyes are full of hatred and jealousy. You can see all of them looking from a ledge at one part of the wall in particular. You know what part of the wall that is. That's the one that is currently shattered in the time you live in. You move past them, deeper into the cavern, until eventually you see, slowly pacing back and forth, Alindar. As he paces and stops and sees you, a sigh of relief. Oh, God bless him. I'm so very happy to see you. I was worried. It's been weeks. Oh. Sorry about that. I guess I don't have my timing exactly right. It's only been, well, two nights since we last spoke. And last night I was stopped by your mother, so... Um... Point is, I... Wait, wanted to when and it. how? In the city... Close by, um, Chednasad. I was recently there, I suppose. I don't know, maybe we'll be there. Again, I'm not too sure on the time thing. But that's the city we'll be traveling through. It's an outpost, at least in my time. I'm not sure if there still is then. The city is dangerous. If it's not Malice, it's going to be Kuatoa there. If you're able to get past them, I feel like that'd be best. I didn't realize Malice was there. That's good, thank you. I'll take the long way around the city. It might be a couple of extra weeks travel, but it'll be worth it to stay away from her. What's next, though? Do I know what next? Do I remember what's next? Were we told what was next? Um, um just a bunch of Kuatoa shit, right? That's all we really got. Well, um, Alton did say that the sleeping city did used to be a drow fortress. Right, and so then that would be beyond. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so she will really like that, and again, like any other details she was able to get from out and, um, any names, roots, anything, she will just pass that on. Hmm. The Fortress of Desavold, then. I have a few friends there that I think might be willing to help me. Are you sure? I can trust them. Is they're not drow. The Duragar helped construct the fortress. What I might be able to do is I could potentially leave plans nearby, um, in a, a rocky outcropping near it. I don't know if they'll still be there by the time you get there, but it might help. Uh, maybe a passage underneath the city, something to assist you. Right. Be useful. Right. Um. Yes, hopefully I'll be able to run into you some other time then. I will wait for you in a safe place outside of Desavold then. I'll try to find you. Stay safe. He nods. And with that, Carousilla, at that moment, you can feel the um, connection begin to thin. And if you did not choose to relinquish it in this moment, you could feel another one of those concentration checks coming. But if you choose to relinquish the dream, no concentration check will need to be made. It's just if you want to do more here. 
think that's all she'd want to be doing. She doesn't want to try and spend too much time, especially when Malice is also going to be a problem, so... Mm -hmm. Okay. So, eventually, you do step out of the realm of dreams. You do still wake up a little bit later than everyone else, but not too late. It doesn't take nearly as much poking and prodding to get you up and about, but it's just something that happens when you delve into that dream world. It is you end up staying there much longer than what you realize. So, eventually all of you awake. You have three more days of travel. Any more dreams? No, it's nope. good. Okay. All right. Any other conversations? Uh, real quick. So we took two sleps. So do we recover to exhaustion? Yeah, by the end of the journey, you should be totally refreshed on exhaustion. Right. So that we're ready to lose three more. Correct. Yeah. Hell yeah. Could you imagine if I made it so no matter what you did, <laughs> like it's guaranteed like three people would die if they happened. <laughs> nice. That would be cruel, Joe. By day three, the whole party has zero speed. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> we just are all floating on Bigsby's hands. Just slowly. We're all just laying on it. Uh, um, Cecily um, has two possible dialogue trees that can be activated oh. by the party. Um, oh, okay. Neither of them are particularly urgent but you know just in case we fucking die um she could have a talk with ajax and a talk with carousella there's there's topics pending uh on both things there so seems john is gone yeah. um so so she could go buy her carousella first i guess if you want it. Um Yeah, so she will find Carousella in the morning one of these days after she's awake from dreaming and has had time to get rid of her eye crusties. Um and yeah, she'll just kind of sit calmly by and so I don't know what else to bring this up but I've been thinking about how long we've been down here and how long we're still going to be down here and I feel like it should just be said aloud that by the time we get back Draven might be up there been thinking about that too the part of me hopes that maybe he is just in Bromscroft something has to be easy right if he is dear and maester um, I'm cool with whatever you want to do about it, I guess. I just want to make sure that it's not like last time, um, and that we're on the same page. So, what do you want to do? I'll back you up. If I'm honest, I don't know. I. I just, I just know that he can't be in the city. And what that will mean, I'm not entirely sure, but Maester is in a delicate enough situation. Draven will just complicate that. And I know that he's supposedly had his mind wiped, but, but I don't want to have to take that chance to verify it in any way and I know who he was I know 
I know some of the things that he's done. And walking in into the city and having a militia behind him for the supposed purpose of doing good, that is something he's done before and the city burned for it. And if the fact that I know who he is can stop that happening again, or even in a lesser degree, then I want to make sure that I don't miss out on that chance. Because I've... I saw... I saw that old Draven in his eyes when we... Even when we were in Periton, honestly. And I wanted to look past it, but I... Wouldn't be able to... Sit right at all. If he does anything to those people. If there's anything I can tell you about Draven, he is salt sown into soil. Nothing will ever thrive as long as he's there. Carousel, you don't have to convince me. I just want to make sure whatever, I don't know, worldview we're approaching this with, that we're gonna work together this time. I mean, naturally, I don't want to have to do anything that I feel we wouldn't be on the same page with already. I just, I didn't know what else to do, and I had to do something in that moment, so apologies if you disagree. I don't disagree, it just... I don't know if... the version of you that has told me how to approach my own life would agree. That's all. And I don't know what to do about that. I mean, I, I don't think there's anything inconsistent with it. Right. We're all at this conversation, right? What was I said, that? are we? We're all at this conversation, right? This is the morning talk. I intended this to be private. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm just making sure before well, I say something mind. and I was gone <laughs> and then I ruined the moment. <laughs> that, would be, that, would, that would be, that would be interesting. Um, Ajax just appears, but um, no, she'll just kind of right. Well, um, Either way. Hopefully he's not in the city at all. Hopefully Odin isn't either. But... I guess we'll just... do what we gotta do. There's more you wanted to say, Cecily. You know I'd hear it. matters right now, but um, I told you the night we were headed towards Anvath that 
I look at everybody in the world and I assume that they're going to do the wrong thing and that there's no reason to trust them and I'm tired of being right. And you told me that maybe I could apply that realization to the Odinsons. And it took about two days for you to show me that if you were in my shoes, you probably wouldn't do that. If you had somebody that you didn't trust as much as I wouldn't trust him ever again, you wouldn't do that. And that's fine. I don't know why you would. I just... Look, there's the part of you that looks up at the sky that one night we're on the boat and says things are allowed to be okay, and then there's the part of you that makes these off-the-cuff judgment calls about Draven. And I think those two parts can exist. I just think you got to be a little more honest about them. I mean, right now, it's like you're trying to take this choice you made and cram it into this perfect shell and maybe you're just a person like me and everyone else who sometimes does something a little sketchy and then has to deal with it that's all I... I'm not going to disagree with you. I... I'm very honest with you, Cecily. Draven scares the shit out of me. Because for the longest time he was trusted to be part of the children, to be working and fighting for the light. And he was only a dark And I spoke to Mimperit and he was a man afraid, a man that didn't know his own history, a man that swore that he was going to try and do better, and then he rocks up to the gates of Maristel with a loyalist army behind him, cocky as all ever. I would love for him to be a kind person. For him to be able to come back into the light somehow, but... I don't think that's what he wants. I think he has been... I think he's always been in the Dark One's pocket there. I think he's already a man that is lost. Maybe the Odinsons are too. I don't know, maybe Loki is with everything he pulled a boulder as well, but... all of it for them came down to trying to prevent a prophecy, yes? I'm not going to justify anything they did. It was terrible. There is no justification in it. But the motive are different. The people are different. And I I don't know, I, I was talking with Baldur, I suppose, Loki think a couple of nights before everything happened and naturally the topic of family was brought up and or at least I thought I could see some genuine hurt there the Odinson's are not a healthy place to be around and so I don't know I think I think part of me worries that Boulder Lurky had just been so pulled into that that he turned himself against the world. And so I do believe that maybe with a little bit of kindness people can be brought back to the light and out from that whole line of thinking. So I don't believe it, I don't. 
I was going to give that chance of Draven, but I think he's already thrown it away. Okay then. I'll follow your lead if he's up there. Would you follow mine if Odin is up there? Because I feel the same way about him. I think I will live in reason. So I think that's also another important point. I've said I am just a person. I get scared. I get... Well, I have... Poor judgments. That's why none of us are doing this alone in the first place. If we're all left to our devices, we would have gotten ourselves killed. Much earlier than, than any of this. And so I suppose more than following each other's lead. What I'd suggest is that we do work together in these things. Back each other up when we need it. Pull each other out when we go too far. Okay. Deal. She will extend a fist bump. Yeah, fist bump back. Alright. That's all she needed to hear there. I can also talk to Ajax or somebody can do other stuff now. Plus five conversation XP. Woo. Well. Boo -doo -doo -doo. You can talk to Ajax. I thought about having a brief conversation with Suni. I don't think it'd be anything as extensive as what y'all got going on. But otherwise, what I don't do have think? anything else. Well, let's do the get... Suni Bianca thing. You know, get a little bit of a. Yeah. Changing the guard. Cameron yeah. did say that he would have to leave for a little bit. So Cameron, I don't know if you're there. I'm actually no longer have to leave for a little bit, so I'm here and I'm good. <laughs> oh, bro. Damn. oh my god. So, um, is this a is this a nighttime watch conversation or is this is like a morning before you get going? It can be on the walk kind of kind. It's not. Oh. It's not my mom died. Like it's like <laughs> just a conversation. Okay. All right. So what I will say on the uh, third day, um, as all of you are traveling throughout the city, um, it does. Ooh, excuse me. It does seem like the area you're passing through right now um, seems to be the uh, temple district. Um, you can see many, many, many statues in this area and a lot of iconography that would lead you initially to believe um, that these areas and all these temples must be places of uh, worship to Loth, the um, perceived drow goddess. Um, there's no name, there's no anything scribed on it. There are a lot of spider statues there are a lot of stone carvings of webs that sort of hang over you, almost like, a, um, uh, fuck, what is the term? Oh my God. Curtain? Not a curtain. It's like a ceiling that has holes Canopy. in it. Canopy, yes. That's um, twice now. I got your back, Joe. <laughs> thanks, Mark. Um, <laughs> yeah. It is uh, these canopies that, that are carved in a way, made of stone that are carved in a way to look like spider webs that are just covering each individual chunk of the street you're currently walking down. Um, but there's no names anywhere. It's just you assume Loth because of mm -hmm. the spider iconography and she is the drow goddess of, uh, or she's the goddess of the drow. 
so cool. Um, well, as they're walking through the temples, um, and Bianca's looking up at the iconography and everything, um, assuming she's just walking with Suni on this day, um, she'll say, Have you noticed any changes in your connection with Elowin? I know you've had a few different interesting connections and I didn't know if anything got better or more rocky for you because I know I've noticed some changes with the Raven Queen. Uh, Suni will kind of give a ponderous look up um, thinking about it for a second uh, before saying well the last time I tried to reach out I really didn't get anywhere uh, but that was a while ago I've not tried since we've been down here. I honestly, I'm a little scared too. Mm. I, is scared too because we're down here, or is there another reason? Well, I don't know. It's just the last time I had really connected with Elowen. She seemed like she was growing weak in some way, and I, being down here, just away from all of her influence, it just. I don't know. Wouldn't feel right. No, that makes sense. For me, because it's interesting you said that connection or she felt weak because the Raven Queen felt different the last time we connected. Just not that the Raven Queen's particularly warm, but much colder. Um, more like I was her vessel rather than her Valkyrie, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's very strange. It was odd, but I don't know if that... I guess if you're having some issues with connecting with Elowen, maybe that's not just her, maybe it's an issue connected to the Dark One and maybe all the gods connecting with yeah. their people. And... Now, you might know more about this because I don't know shit about anything pretty much, but aren't the Raven Queen and Elowen different types of gods? Maybe yeah. there's some, I don't know, something with your type of god and not with mine? Yeah, she's part of... Elowen's part of the nature, I'm gonna call it Pantheon, I guess. Um, I also, before the Raven Queen, didn't care much for gods, so my studies really didn't focus there, but they are different, and the Raven Queen's more in the circle of, like, the big five, like, Paylor and everything. So... And I know Ajax kind of was connected to Leos. But I haven't heard much more about that, but... They're both so different as well. It's just really hard to... Get a good frame of... It's like, I, I don't know, I just went from, like... The Raven Queen speaking to me herself and giving me all these abilities to help me with my journey, and then I reach out just for a question, and then suddenly I'm possessed. Ugh. And it's just, like, very cold. Gods are so wishy-washy. Yeah, that's part of the reason I wasn't much of a... I mean, also the whole, like, my soul is owned by a devil. Maybe I shouldn't talk to gods, kind <laughs> of. <laughs> energy uh yeah i just didn't know if you had any more insight i haven't like you i've been a little nervous to reach out again just because i don't know actually besides just nerves in general well maybe one of these nights we can sit down and i don't know help each other reach out see if it changes anything Maybe we just need to try and... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. I... Maybe we just need to try and build the connection rather than reach out for 
questions and something desired, like something they need to give us. Mm. Maybe I haven't been giving back as much as I thought I had been. You know, that's really interesting. I kind of feel the same. Maybe I haven't either. And then maybe we can get Ajax in with us so we can have a little giving trio. Yeah, a little religion support group. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That sounds good. We can give it a shot after, you know, we don't die from yep. all the impending doom. <laughs> Uh, well, hopefully the gods still favor us enough to help us not die before then. Here's hoping. Huh. <laughs> Life was easier when I didn't care about the gods. E exactly. Yes. Wow. Things were a lot more simple when we just, yep. like... When it was just us back at Summer's Rest, man. In jail. Uh, Easy days. God, I miss it. Never would I think I would miss jail, but... Yeah. I don't know. This isn't so bad with all of you guys down here with me. That's interesting. It's definitely better, but it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's still pretty horrible, but... <laughs> but no, you're right. Wouldn't want to be uh, down here with anybody else. And she'll, like, put her arm around Suni. Oh, Cute. Love it. Okay. I um <laughs> I just wanna say I just got a notification on my phone of somebody that just commented on the short that I posted today. <laughs> and it's the really bad joke Mark made last week that I died from. Oh, Dude, I think that was the comment you're talking about. <laughs> I just want you to know, um, Cameron, during that clip, uh you looked rather concerned with something on your character <laughs> sheet so somebody commented and it was like middle left dude needs a fucking hug <laughs> i do need a fucking hug <laughs> oh god uh, uh, well, hug. that's so funny emma hates you oh my god she's crying there we go <laughs> oh. look at that look at that I know those aren't physical, but you know. Yeah. You felt it, right? Oh, very much so. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, hopefully you feel a little better. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Whatever this is. <laughs> Fucking face hug. hugger. <laughs> that's how you hug, right? That's, yep. that's okay. how you hug. Okay. All righty. So. So um, unless there's anything else, Cecily will approach Ajax. Hey, Ajax, do you think you would have arrested me? Are we walking, or are we just we're walking, <laughs> I imagine. right? I think she'd wait until we were walking. <laughs> I feel like Ajax would just slow down and stop. And then keep walking again. Why, why would... What were your crimes? Hmm. Well, usually I would steal gold from people at the market to buy food. Mm -hmm. That happened pretty often. Sometimes I bought food I actually needed, but if we're being totally honest, I usually bought desserts too. Um, All right. And if I didn't get caught, which was... I'd like to say it was most of the time, but I got caught a lot. But on days where I didn't get caught and I still had money left over, I actually wouldn't keep it. I would pass it around to other poor people that needed it. So, you know, maybe that makes up for something. Was that your only crime? Oh, no. I figured I'd just start there and see if you said okay. yes already. I think initially... For that crime, I would have detained you. Then figured out what you were doing with it and gave you a stern warning. 
and then let you go. Okay, that's pretty much what the Waters Wake people did. So what's the second crime? Um... Killing? Right, so yes. I would have arrested you immediately. What if mm. it was an accident? Unfortunate <laughs> as it is, it is still killing someone. So you would be arrested and you would go to trial. Wait, how did you accidentally kill somebody? Well, if you were totally cool with it, maybe I would have told you. Mm. Alright. I am a, I am a big old grump. I'm not cool with most things. Okay, what? Okay. Um... So, before you met me, I was not a magic person. I was just a person person. Couldn't do All any right. of this stuff. And my eyes were gray and no one knew why. I was a scam I used to run. I would act blind in order to uh, swindle Poe's dad out of money. That was a pretty good one. Uh, Who's Poe's that? Someone you used to yeah, adventure was... with, correct? Yeah, Janazi boy, goody two shoes. But so, anyway, I have a question, real quick, before we continue the conversation. Uh, I feel like Ajax is pretty good as a guard. You know, uh, he mm -hmm. can read people kind of okay. When Cecily's talking about Poe, does Ajax pick up on the uh, on those feelings? Oh. Um... Have to roll something. Well, I guess that's a Joe question. But as far as I would say, okay. Um, that's you. If this is not a, <laughs> is this NPC deceiving me? This, this is your call. Yeah. Um, she's not particularly good at feigning indifference. So I would say you're kind of able to see this, like, overcompensation of belittlement and aggression. <laughs> Hmm. Um, that she's like it was definitely not, someone close to her yeah she, it, you would at least know that much because she's not like yeah he's kind of a goody too she's like yeah goody ting she like she's like <laughs> definitely it's it's um if they're like mean a, to you they like you <laughs> yeah I mean not to reinforce that but yeah it's kind of a a, a strong positive emotion that she she kind of tries to like well um, to to maintain maintain her usual disposition. So so killing. Um, you used to have gray eyes. Yes. And one day. It was raining really hard, and I just got caught for something. It was beignets. You ever had beignets? Fucking beignets, man. Anyway, um, I got caught for stealing again. And I had this mom at the time. She's the bad one. I've had three. She was definitely the worst of the three. I'm sorry. Yeah. I could go into all sorts of stories that would take up probably our whole walk out of here, but I'm not doing anything else. But we'll keep it short. About uh, a quarter of these. And she'll just kind of motion generally at, at the, the scarring and discoloring and all of that. That is on her arms and neck and everything. 
about a third of these are her. Well, she was really grilling into me that night, and I don't know what it was about that day in particular, but for the first time, I decided that I wasn't just going to take it. So I went to hit back, and right as I did, there was a big crack of thunder outside. And then all of a sudden, I looked down at the carpet, and that was it. I suddenly was able to do all this, and she'll just kind of spark between her fingertips a bit. So, you know. I ran away, and then a bunch of shit happened, and now we're here. So I haven't really been worrying about it much, but now that we're kind of becoming public heroes, I don't know if I should be worried about it coming back to what haunt you. No. Yeah. I still stand by what I said. I would have to arrest you. But there I have been in my tenure. Special cases of those that injure or unfortunately kill with use of magic children who find out they have magic. Accidental deaths due to experimentation with magic. Those are special cases, even though the person's arrested most times. They don't serve time. There's nothing you can do about an accident, especially when it comes to magic. Sorry that happened to you. Well, um... I don't like the way it went down either, but... If I'm being honest... Maybe no one in Water's Wake missed her. Probably. Still, never thought I'd ever be friends with a guard to ask. Never thought I'd be friends with a royal, either. And, you know, here we are. Used to hate well, authority figures, now I'm becoming one. That's gross. Uh, I wouldn't consider myself an authority figure anymore. And that life is... Well... Still... Close my past is still my path I would arrest myself for the things I've done since I've gone out of being a guard really mm -hmm. hmm. well what if instead of serving time all of us just admit we're a little fucked up and go save the world us specifically or the world as a whole well us specifically first you know, okay. kind of set the example hmm. I agree 
I don't think you should feel ashamed for what happened. That's the worst part, Ajax. I feel guilty that I don't feel guilty. I'm glad mm. she's out of my life. Let me ask you this. Do you feel guilty of the others that you've... Well, I had to kill since you've been out here doing all of this. She'll think kind of seriously, swallow. Now that I've been where I'm sending them, yeah. I don't want to send anyone there. But if I well, have to... Sometimes, being a good person just means feeling worse about the shit you have to do anyway. At least that's how it's been for me. No, I can relate to that. Well, the good thing is that I'm not a guard anymore and I'm not going to arrest you for murder, so... It'd be bad timing, if nothing else. I figure I'd tell you now, where you don't have much of a choice. Well... I would assume the city does have a dungeon somewhere. Ajax, I think this is the dungeon. All of it. Maybe there's a more dungeony dungeon. <laughs> well... Either way, uh... I know I'm not a model citizen or anything, but are we cool? I mean, like, after this whole shindig is over and life goes back to normal and I have a laundry list of crimes, like... Cecily, did you think we weren't? Well... I don't usually get along with authority. I said it already, I'm not authority anymore. Well. Look. We have all done shitty things. A lot of it I've seen in the past month. We're fine. We're cool, as you said. Good. Okay. Has that been troubling you? Maybe. Maybe like that much. For how long? Maybe like that long. Out of how long? Eh, just well, just kind of like vaguely, <laughs> vaguely gauge. You can talk to me whenever you want. Please do not think of me as an authority figure either. A guard. I'm just Ajax. Well, Ajax, next time we're in a fight where there's enough space to do it, I want to summon my big hand and throw you. I would very much enjoy that. I think uh, I should... I actually have been wanting to talk to all of you about specific battle plans. I have some ideas for all of us. Some things that we could use in our battle, I know that I have something I would like to try with Bianca, with you, Suni, Carasilla. I... This is what my mind... 
about 90% of the time is about combat tactics. Well then. I can also give, uh, give myself gills, if you know how to utilize that somehow. I come up, we're going to a fish place. Hmm, I will look for bodies of water. I can make you jump real high. I can already jump real high. Higher. Really? Yep. Noted. Can you make me bigger? Uh... No. No, mm. I don't think so. Maybe one of these days it'll show up. But... Not right they now. just kind of... They just show up. Yep. Right. It's just kind of been like a... Second puberty kind of thing. Magic puberty. Mm. They just sort of show up someday. Well... Kind of I am always around to talk about battle plans. Cool. But also other things. Also cool. Anything else? Nah, dude, we're good. Dude. All right. Just yell out hand toss during the fight if you need to. I'll know what to do. I'll think of another word. Okay, well, when you think of another word, tell me that I'll let you word know. so I know what to do. Mm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> Ajax will just kind of put his hand on Cecily's shoulder, which he's like seven feet tall, so he has to kind of get down a little bit. Yeah, you have to lean it. two feet down. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just going to kind of pat her on the shoulder and just continue walking forward. You could probably just, like, pick her up with one hand. <laughs> just... Just, like, palm her scalp. <laughs> Piggyback yeah. ride. Dude. Surfing on the hand, piggyback riding? Hell yeah. <laughs> Lawrence asked Ajax for a piggyback ride, but he'd probably get... He'd probably, uh, oblige. Or I could cast jump on you and then ride on you, because your jump distance... Yep, you are you got 20 strength, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I can triple the math for whatever your jump distance is and then whatever that is it's like yeah. five thousand feet i could jump probably yeah, i'm sure about <laughs> there <laughs> yeah like i'm just like the hulk yeah. but yeah and cecily's like 105 pounds what's the carry weight in D D? something stupid and unrealistic right it's like yep. 400 pounds mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so we're good true facts okay Alrighty, with that, the conversation finishes up as all of you rest for the fifth and final night. Almost Shit. to the end of the city, which also will mark the beginning of the reinforced Kuatella. territory of the Kuatella. Nice. So, as all of you march along and approach what I would like to know right now is a marching order. Middle. You already know. Okay. Somewhere um, in the middle as well. I think uh, either Bianca or Suni can be up with Ajax and then the other one can be behind maybe the other two so that they're sandwiched between like some protection. Okay. Okay. So do you want to be in the by Ajax or in the back? I'll be in the back. Cool. I'll be by Ajax. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. And then you want Alton to be stealthing away, but near. Oh shit. We're going into. Ooh, I mean, carousel I should be near the, the thing, front. Isn't... Shit, should I? You gotta talk but to the if, fish, dude. But I mean, if it's like an entourage thing, you know, I don't need a lead. And um, but I will also say, like, I guess Alton doesn't really need to be too, too close, because if anything starts going to shit, I can message him. Or I guess send him. Do we know, okay, do we know what class Alton is? Or like, 
Oh. We would probably want him near to assist us sooner rather than later if things he... go really to Yeah, show. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to ask if like he's a ranged fighter or a melee fighter because he is a dex based fighter. He can do either or. Ooh. Well, we know RWA hates bow and arrows, so. <laughs> Is this Nalfian? <laughs> is um, he an Echo Knight? No, no, he no. is. Uh, he is a fighter. Um, is but he a part of the fighter. Well, I, I justify. I didn't want to say just a fighter because I didn't want to devalue <laughs> being a fighter. Um, was that a companion? I thought he was a ranger. ranger. Uh, no, he is, would be. I suppose a battle master fighter. Maneuvers and shit. Yeah. Hell yeah. I should think. I think if things go to shit, we'll want him closer rather than farther away. So just far enough that he's out of the way in case things go right. How high is the ceiling? Oh wait, yeah, he's gonna be on the ceiling. Don't. Um. Well, if the ceiling's like the city we're looking at right now, yeah. he's not gonna <laughs> be on the ceiling. He could get to a vantage point. Where he is fairly well concealed. Um, but are we like in open area? We're like in. Yeah, it's relative. Oh, we're not going to a tunnel. Fuck. Hmm. I think you should he... just stay like relatively fifty feet away. I think that's fine. <clears throat> yeah. With a bow, I mean, he could dash that in a turn. With a bow, he could shoot that in a turn. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good play. Sorry. Especially because. I, to use my meta brain for just a sec, I assume his mount has a somewhat higher movement speed. Correct. Than like his on foot speed. So he yeah. probably, even if he's 60 like, feet. yeah, even if he's a, a, a jaunt away, I think with a dash, he could close in real quick on that mount. Well, jaunt. So we'll say uh, for, for, you know, marching order. He's a jaunt away from us. Sweet. Yeah. Everyone's favorite <laughs> unit. A jaunt. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use my my action to jaunt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, with the monk class, I get two extra skips of movement per, uh, per turn. <laughs> Flurry I'm of gonna, jaunts. <laughs> I'm going to move three hops and two skips and one jump. I'm going over yonder. Okay, so we'll say he stays uh, at least 150 feet away, so that way he's That's still within point. longbow shooting distance. Cool. We just Got figured that. out the measurement of a jaunt. Yep. Um, okay, alrighty. So, um, um, oh, I'll probably need to re-put down those sheets right there. Um, oh, let me also remove Bless from Ajax. Oh, how dare you. Just be blessed. Yeah, why? You I bless you. It didn't God last damn it. 96 hours. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm fall, always blessed. Bro. I have Paylor on my side. <laughs> I've got an anime on my side. Dude, I can't wait for our religious talk. <laughs> Our little, like, like uh, yeah. It's like our religious book club. Y'all cute. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Power, keeping each other accountable. So, Paylor yeah, said this to me today. He told me to <laughs> praise the sun. Oh, good job. Did you praise the sun? Oh, uh, I haven't done it yet, but I Whoa. will. So, give it. Okay, it's nighttime. Good. We're in the Underdark. Good one fucking job, Ajax, <laughs> to praise the sun. There's no sun in the it. Underdark. Make like sun. Be that beacon of light in the darkness or whatever the shit he said before. <laughs> I think Caracilla would do a really good job of running the support group. <laughs> I think that'd be great. Yeah. Should so we can, like, bring cook cookies and keep the books or whatever. Okay, so... He's a, um, he's a lay person. All of you make your way. <laughs> and you begin to approach an area that all of you, regardless of your passive perception, you can see that there are Kuatoa waiting. Alton breaks away from the rest of the group. And currently you can see an area of elevated platforms, uh, ruined buildings and rivers of water rush through. 
There are also several torches that burn in different areas, providing a slight glimmer of light. You can also see on the far end of the bridge you need to cross, there is an exit out of the city that Alton informs you will lead to the drow outpost that you need to get to. As of right now, you can see there are four Kuatoa here. Two that you've seen before. A regular Kuatoa that has no bearing um, or any special features about them. They carry a very simple spear and a net. You see a Kuatoa whip uh, the larger, more bulky creatures that carry these staffs as well as what looks to be a sickle attached to a rope. You can also see a creature that you had not yet seen before, smaller than the whip, but larger than the standard Kuatoa. You can see the mucus that covers their body is much thicker and leaves a trail behind them. They wear regal robes and carry a staff. Uh, you can assume this is an archpriest. And then finally, you see a Kuatoa that, if it wasn't standing near the others, you would not recognize it as one. It is twisted. Um, it seems to have a set of amphibian-like wings that sort of drape off the back that seem to be just uh, comprised of layers of mucusy flesh. You can see a large fin um, emerging out of the skull and clinging down the back, hues of blue and green, and this strangely shaped, almost like a dissented stomach that has, looks to be something writhing inside of it. Perhaps something that it just ate, as you see what is known as a Kuatoa monitor. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and share the token art this bop in the chat. The monitors stand much taller um, probably around seven or eight feet tall, the same size as Ajax, they tower over the rest. You can see they keep a watchful eye over the horizon. Could I ask how big the rest are? Are they like small folk sized? Um, the regular Kuatoa and the Archpriest, yes, probably closer to dwarves, so maybe, you know, 4'8 to 4'11 in that range. Um, the monitor is a shorter human, so probably around Cecily's height. And then the monitor is about Ajax's height. Okay. So with that, initially, this is the area that all of you approach before the Kuatoa notice you. Oop, ooh. So as you all approach this area, ready to hopefully be able to open up a dialogue with the Kuatoa before moving any further, that is where we're gonna go ahead and take a break. Take a break right there. And okay, <laughs> okay, okay. I, I understand now. I didn't, I didn't see the context for why you said that, Mark. I thought it was yeah, just okay. out of the blue. <laughs> I do Alrighty. just say shit sometimes. So, <laughs> so thanks for watching so far. Uh, when we get back, we will dive into maybe combat. Maybe we'll see what's going on. All right. Thanks for watching so far, and we'll be right back.
Hello, we're back. Sorry, I had to eat pizza rolls because I was a little hungry. Um, but we're here now. We're ready to to have a, a jolly grand old time. At least I am. Um, so here's the thing. Well, I guess we'll wait until we roll initiative to see if that happens. So all of you approach. Carousilla leading the pack. You can see as you approach the Kuatoa. Hold on. Hold on. Before we approach, though, just because we got to start formulating shit now. Um, it's real quick, but Carousel will use Shift Weave into her more formal, fancy outfit. Um, so, yeah. Just to 
hopefully start the cell early. <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds good. Cool. <laughs> I have other plans, but they can wait. Okay. So then I suppose that answers the question I was just about to ask. Are you guys stuffing? Oh, shit. <laughs> then are you approaching I mean, loud we? and proud? I feel like we should, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Well, if we really want to do plan A, I don't think we should hide because that can be perceived as hostile. What the fuck? So. Plan A, let's go. Go, dude. <laughs> Why is Suni running away? <laughs> That's some, some weird. No, Malice is taking He's over like, his body. <laughs> okay. Oh, <there. laughs> so. You approach. As you approach, the one Kuatoa, the large bulbous head immediately turns towards all of you. And in a language that is not under common, specify, you can see it looks up towards the archpriest up at the top and points to all of you that are 10 feet away <laughs> and says, <laughs> intruders, you know, <laughs> you guys are 10 feet away really doing their job as watch guards. <laughs> and you can see the archpriest immediately say, and this he does say in undercommon. <laughs> and you can see there is an immediate moment where they do turn, ready to attack, but Carousel, I give you one opportunity here to try and appeal to these fish people and prove to them that you are a god in one fell swoop. One fell swoop, eh? Okay. You um, have six to ten seconds. You got this. Me? Okay. Hurry up. Um, okay. Let me see which of my plans I want to do. Okay, 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 okay. Um, fuck. We will... Firstly, go. I imagine he's very far. He's very far. Cool. Where's the priest actually? Hold on. Which one is the priest? Ah. That boy up there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, where it says Archpriest. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> um. Okay. That's okay. But we can see everyone else. Mm -hmm. And you. Cool. Okay. To lead in strong, we are going to. First. Yeah. First cast mass suggestion. Going in strong. Okay. On everyone, but the archpriest, and obviously the party too, but you know. Um, and she will use it, I guess, more like a command and just shout out I want you all to kneel. In the wall. What is it? Wisdom says. Alright. Okay. Okay. Uh, DC. Uh, 18 now. 18. Okay, cool. Damn. So that is. Mm. Mm. Okay. That cloak is pretty fucking sick, dude. Alrighty. Not looking good for the Kuatella. <laughs> <laughs> The, the first one's a success, actually. So the <laughs> monitor, the big Bitch! one, succeeds. <laughs> Bitch, I should have fucking used antibiotics. This is fine. That's fine. Um, they rolled a uh, 17 plus 2, 19. Middle one. 6 plus 0, failure. The regular Kuatoa, of course, <laughs> they, they immediately <laughs> fall to the ground. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, then finally, the whip. Seven plus two, nine. Not nearly as willing to swoon, but they do drop down to their knee. So we'll say for the purposes, this one is currently paralyzed and prone. This guy is just prone. But you can see as that happens, as the two of them immediately start to kneel to you, being moved by your magical powers, you can see the archpriest, this large 
flab of flesh underneath its chin covered in mucus and slime as it begins to wriggle and writhe as he shakes his head and raises his staff. Come to me! GM <laughs> slam his staff down on the ground um, in front of him as you can hear the earth begin to shake a bit as you can see Kuwatoa just begin to emerge from different cracks and crevices all around. Um, we chose the right path, guys. <laughs> we did. We did. Come to me! Hell yeah. Alrighty. So Wait, then... there's more Kuwatoa? Kua uh huh, there are. Hmm. Bad choice. So we'll 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 get to we'll get to we'll get to things here in a second. Kuatoa, Kuatoa. Kuatoa. Oh, yeah. oh, there's so many. Kuatoa Oh whip. my god, wait, we have three days of Kuatoa, Kuatoa. Oh, no. You have one more rest. Once you get to the dry oh. outpost, you get one more rest. <laughs> oh, okay. man, Good that's to know. unfortunate for these specific groups of Kuatoa. <laughs> Kuatoa whip. Okay. <laughs> we can just use everything. Just fuck you. Because, like, we could still impress them. And make that like yeah, if we yeah. attack everyone who's not groveling. That's actually what I was thinking. Kill everyone else and then say like, we I still have plans. <laughs> okay, I will yeah, yeah, show yeah. mercy on you if you <laughs> bring me to so, your leader. <laughs> with that, as the Kuatoa emerge, there is no mercy in their eyes, as they are ready to attack and fight on behalf of their archpriest. So with that, as they ready their weapons, as they begin to run to attack you, I would like all of you to roll for initiative. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on, Ajax. Don't fucking roll bad. Oh. You rolled oh, bad, Ajax. <laughs> Could somebody oh, roll for Sunni? Can I open up his character sheet? Nope. I'm yeah, gonna have advantage you. on initiative rolls and still just fucking roll shit. Hey man, at least you can get a one. If anybody is um, curious, my initiative thing works now. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's, nice. That's good for you, dude. Thank what you. What does that mean? What do you mean your initiative thing works now? Uh, during Isles on Saturday, whenever I would try and roll initiative from the combat tracker, it wouldn't work. So I had to do it manually for each character, which is Ooh. annoying. Does somebody have access to Suni's character? Uh, yeah, I can. I can roll oh, real okay. quick. Er, Thank you. Uh, okay. Your roll for initiative, Suni, was a natural 20. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. And then Bianca, what was yours? 18. 18. Okay, begin combat. Uh. Okay. Uh, um, that's the Kuatoa's accent without the voice. They're Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all the phlegm that makes it unrecognizable. Okay. It's Swedish fish. It's perfect. Okay. <laughs> that's amazing. That was good. That was good. That was, <laughs> that was the funniest thing you've said in three years. Um, all right. So before we dive in, before anybody goes, there is something very important mechanically that all of you need to understand about how the Kuatoa operate, okay? The Kuatoa, any of the encounters you have with them, there is a mechanic called belief that is active whenever you're fighting against large groups of Kuatoa. So as I've said canonically in lore, Kuatoa can believe in something hard enough and it can become real, it can become a god, it can be incredibly more powerful. Mechanically, how that's implemented into combat encounters is as soon as it starts to happen, I'm gonna add a counter to the combat map. That is how many current stacks of belief exist in the battle map, okay? At the end of a round, I will add up how many stacks of belief there are active, and that becomes a pool that the Kuatoa can spend on the 20 of initiative for whatever they want. So this could be anything from healing all allies by five hit points. It could be advantage on all saves. It could be succeeding saves means no damage at all on a deck save. Or it could even mean to summon creatures depending on how many stacks of belief they spend. 
the number of stacks of belief are dependent on how many Kuatoa are there at the end of a round, right? That just makes sense. The more Kuatoa they are, the stronger the belief is. The most important thing you need to understand, every single Kuatoa on here, except for the Archpriest, only provides one belief. But for every Kuatoa within 40 feet of the Archpriest, so I'll go ahead and make a... Um, a radius around them. Uh, so every Kuatoa within 40 feet. Okay, 40 one. foot radius around them. So one. Mm -hmm. Every Kuatoa within 40 feet of the Archpriest counts for five faith. So the Archpriest counts as five and any other creature within 40 feet counts as five as well. So that is 10 points of faith that they will get at the end of the round, depending on how many people are within that 40 foot sphere. That is how the mechanic of belief works. Here's the other thing, right? And this is something that Alton already said. This is just mechanically about the fight. Killing the Kuatoa as fast as you can is so incredibly important. Once you kill, uncertain number of them, they will stop spawning, right? They will stop coming. They will be too afraid to attack you in that moment. The worst thing you can do, which is what Alton said, is run away from the Kuatoa, because as soon as you start running from the Kuatoa, more of them start coming, and then that belief starts to stack up even more, and then they can kind of get you to do whatever they want based off of the belief that is there, all right? So with the Kuatoa, based off what Alton recommended, is kill as many as you can, as fast as you can, and do not run away. All right? Any questions about belief stacks or about what'll happen? In terms of- Clear. Okay, all right, cool. Clear. So with that, we begin combat. Suni, you start up at the top of the turn order. Um, Could I get a screenshot of what the map looks like real quick? I got you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Can I, I just need scream to or will that fuck up the overlay? Um, I think I can hide it if you do. Sick. It'll fuck up a little bit initially, Wait. but. There's just in case. There we go. Nice. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, and oh, the shit. priest is the one with the circle around him? Yep. He, okay. He's currently 85 away from here. 85 away. Um, okay, uh, can I, oh, cool, thank you. And is that circle around him the 40 feet? Correct, yeah. Okay. Um, Suni is going to get as far forward as possible, so moving 30 feet, and then he will go ahead and bonus action to Misty Step in within as close to the priest as he can. Um, and the first, but if possible, nearest to the cluster of, of enemies that are right there, because I'm going to... Yeah. So my first attack, I'm going to use um, my lightning breath to get as many of those people as possible. Mm -hmm. um, okay, the lightning breath is a... It's a 15-foot it's a cone... So it might just be two or three people. Yeah, it'll probably just be those two, I guess. Okay, so that means you just have to go there. Okay, that's fine. Um, And here, actually, I can pull up my... Can I roll things from my character sheet from like the D and D Beyond app? Yeah, I can see those. So that's fine. Oh, okay, cool. Then I can do that. Oh, uh, yeah. let's see. Sorry, I'm so sorry about all this. No, it's okay. Do you need the the uh, stream at all anymore? Um, not right the second now. Okay, all right. Could you stop streaming? Um, it does. I can't get rid of it. 
Okay, let's see. You can't do show non video participants and uncheck it. It gets rid of Cameron. Oh. Uh, okay. Um, well, that's that's, that's how I've had to kind of balance things because that way, if people have their cameras turned off for a session, all I need to do is hide their Discord icon and then replace it with their light up icon. Mm. Because if I do it the other way, then every single session I have to change the shapes. So, gotcha. Yeah. That was 25 points of lightning damage. Oh um, my God. 25 points of lightning damage. Uh, okay. Yeah. So that'll be, is that uh, for yours? Is that deck saves? Um, I think so. Does One lightning first. seem to be stronger against fishies? Yes. Oh, sorry. Not yes to you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, deck say 14. My bad. Decided. 14. Okay. The regular Kuatoa fails. The whip um, will also fail. Hell yeah. Um, no, it seems to not have any additional effect on them. It seems as though due to the... <laughs> the gelatin <laughs> and slime that is covering their skin. It doesn't do any extra damage. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. However, with 25 points of lightning damage, uh, this Kuatoa right here is uh, fish fried. <laughs> Just absolutely <laughs> evaporated. This one will also take 25. It's looking rough, but is not uh, dead. Um, I will go ahead and use my second attack with the Moonblade on it just to try to get it, if it's close to being dead, if I can get it out of the way. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, I rolled damage first. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Bop, bop, bop. 22 to hit. That hits. And then 14 points of damage. Nice. Okay. Wait, it should be more than it should be more than fourteen because I have the uh, plus an extra D eight of my improved divine smite. Ah, uh, okay. Nice. Um. Okay. So, do you want to just roll that extra D eight then, or I guess I can do it in here. Um. Yeah, I don't know if there's like just a dice option on here. I rolled you a three. <laughs> okay. I think there is in like the bottom right corner oh yeah 17. i see it yep it just faded away when i wasn't okay cool okay good to know all right 17 points of damage yeah Looking rough. Ugh, damn okay well that's it i guess all righty boom bloodied all righty cool suny we move on from you to this kuatoa right here um they're going to move oh shit, they're gonna move up 30 feet here and Bianca. Is it gonna be a net attack? Net. <laughs> <laughs> I hurt my foot. For Will. Good Come luck on, my Kutua, hit your net. Come on, little buddy. <laughs> Imagine they all just thought suddenly we're only really well. 19? Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Okay. Shit. All right. I'm netted. Bianca, you are restrained. Okay. Get netted. Oh wait, that's the what wrong. What does that mean? Restrain. Let me do the Can't. correct restrained. Uh, speed becomes zero. Can't benefit from any bonus to speed. Attack rolls against the creature have advantage, and the creature's attack rolls have disadvantage. Creature has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. Immediately um, after they throw the net, spear stab. I was gonna <laughs> say, uh, would hellish rebuke on the net count, so I could burn it off of me, maybe? Like my reaction. What is the wording of hellish rebuke? Ew, that's a good question. <laughs> what else? Does it hellish say the creature rebuke. hits you with a net? <laughs> yeah, I think it's not exactly. A, when I think reaction, it's... you take in response to being damaged by a creature within 60 feet of you that you can see. Yeah. The creature makes. So it's a dexterity saving yeah. throw. I didn't take damage either, so. Not yet. Yeah. yeah, so you didn't oh, take yeah. damage from the net. So you could do it on the spear as yeah. spear, stab, advantage. Uh, 21. <laughs> yeah. Four points of piercing damage. Okay. <laughs> Quick jab. But then, okay. if you'd well, like, you can, you, can, you can hellish rebuke. Yeah, I will hellish rebuke now. Get the get I also, low. I dropped the restrained condition in the chat for you. Because I have the condition sheets pulled up for Cecily, so I remember what shit does. 
Oh, 20. yeah, I guess it, it just displays for me. 20, DC 12? Okay. That's cocked. Uh, deck save, that is a failure. It dies. <laughs> nice. Bye. You're still restrained, though. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Okie dokie. Kuatoa whip. It's going to move 30 feet there. Um, and then it will. Um, it will get to that point right there and then target it at you, Bianca, since you just um, killed that Kuatoa. It is actually going to something that you had not yet seen. Um, you can see that uh, the creature sort of thrust the staff into the air um, with that large metal uh, maw-like uh, contraption attached to it thrust it into the air and you can see these this wreath of blue flame begins to slam down towards you as he casts sacred flame so i need you to make a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage interesting is sacred flame radiant only um or is it fire it's radiant okay what am i making <laughs> uh dex saving throw okay dc 12 Ooh. disadvantage well, though Literally, I have plus 12 to my dick <laughs> so... Disadvantage, 18. though. Disadvantage. Oh, disadvantage. Because you're okay. restrained. You're restrained. That's true. That's true. 23. <laughs> 20, okay, all right. 18. So, Radiant Flame comes down, deals no damage to you. All righty. With that, Bianca, it is your turn. You are still restrained. Your movement speed is zero. What do you want to do? So, is it an action to take the net off of myself? Yep. I'll do that. All right, um, that is your action. And my bonus action will be to deal me some damage and get my... They don't see... We have not noticed them have any particular resistances. I know the electric one, but I don't think they would be resistant to ice. Nope, you haven't seen anything else. Uh, you know, we'll try ice just in case, you know. So we'll do frost damage, but probably not. So that, and um, just so we're not clumped, she will move this direction, but she's not going to get into combat with anybody. Just okay. getting in a direction. But yeah, that'll be my action and, or my rounds. Here's my damage to myself. Yay, nice. too. Nice. Okie dokie. We have this Kuatoa whip here then, right after Bianca's turn. Oh, Bianca, you are not restrained anymore. Let me go ahead and. Okay. Um, Kuatoa Whip, this is the one that is currently charmed with mass suggestion. Is that just at the end of their turn they get a save? Oh, let me just check real quick. Um, hold on, I'll just put it in tier two, uh, because I cannot read fast. Um, <laughs> uh, oh, it's, a uh, if they're damaged, I don't think they get a save, actually. Okay. Uh, for example, you might suggest a group of soldiers give all their money to the first bigger than me if the condition is made before the spell ends. The activity is performed. If any of your companions name the creature, the spell effect ends. Hmm. Okay, all right. Well, they're going to stay kneeling. All right. Sick. He stays kneeling. The monitor. This monitor is going to, you can see, uh, Suni, you can actually see this really well. You can see as it like slowly like bumbles on two legs. As soon as you misty step and you attack, the lightning breath shoots out, you throw the moon blade, you can see immediately it goes on all fours and begins to scurry around this ledge down towards you. As Suni, uh, the monitor is going to make gonna make three attacks that's gonna make two unarmed strikes with these large sharp wings um and then one bite attack cute so cute okay first one is a 17 to hit misses hey oh arm strike ah, attack normal 
Uh, next one is a 21 to hit. That hits. Okay. And then that'll be nine points of damage. And then we have a chomp. A chomp. A chomp. Uh, that is 22 to hit. Yeah. Six points of piercing damage. Okay. Okie dokie. All righty, then we come to the Archpriest turn. Archpriest is going to. Hmm. Spell book. feet is that yeah okay um this can't do anything can it hmm. joe are you trying to make fish noises no <laughs> they are going to hold their action um and but the, what they are going to do is they are going to move oh that's not attached okay let me move them first 5 10 15 20 25 30. they're going to move there And that brings uh, one. Oh, man. Okay, they are going to move. Now that I see that a little bit better. They're going to instead choose to move there as opposed to where they were. Okay. All righty. So that means that there are one, two, three, four, five currently within the sphere. And then they're going to hold their action. All right, then we come to Alton's turn. Um, Alton is going to go 50 feet over here and is going to take three longbow shots against the Archpriest. Damage, normal. Uh, 20 to hit, that hits. 10 points of piercing damage. Attack, normal. Uh, 17, that hits. 12 points of piercing damage. That's a 22. And then longbow attack. Normal, 27 to hit, normal, nine. 31 points of piercing damage, okay. Okay, okay, 31 points of piercing damage. That is the end of Alton's turn. Kuatoa here is dead. Kuatoa monitor is going to move back here to attack Sunni, flanking, getting an extra D6 to the three attacks. One D6. Okay. Uh, first one is a 10 Sunni, which is a miss. Second one is a 15, which is a miss. And then a bite attack with the D6. That is going to be a 23 to hit um, for four points of piercing damage on the bite. Okay. Kuatoa here, that is currently worshiping. Absolutely committed. They change nothing that they're doing. Ajax, it is your turn. Okay. So, <clears throat> Ajax is going to. Let me, let me let me see something really quick. I need to. Ajax is going to run over here. Well, I guess he doesn't have to run that far. <laughs> he's going to run this way. And as he's running, he's kind of swiping the... He's kind of like uh, letting the spear drag behind him on the ground, creating sparks off the rocks. And as he does that, he starts twirling the spear and raises up 
and jumps up in the air. And he's going to slam down right here in a 30-foot cone. Oh, it's not going to get the priest. Oh, I guess not. Wait a minute. Where can I get the priest? Are you able to jump oh. up? Right here. Boom. I mean, he's still technically not in the highlighted portion, but I'll, I'll let it slide. <laughs> well, he, well, he's not? Oh, he's not. <laughs> and would that also not be getting Sunni as well? So I read the thing. It says, you slam down anywhere within 10 feet where you activated the ability. Holy bolts crash down on all enemy creatures within 30 feet. Each targeted creature must make a constitution saving throw. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, Soon it's he's not, not like, an enemy. It is not a wave of lightning emanating from him. It's in that point, bolts of lightning slam down in the ground. So he can target which creatures he wants. Sick. Sick. So, boom, target down. He's going to target these three guys. They have to make a constitution 17 saving throw. Okay, con saving throw 17. Oh my goodness. Evil aligned characters make this with disadvantage. Are they okay. evil aligned? They are evil aligned. <laughs> yes. Um, so that was that was a, uh, uh, a 19 with the first roll with disadvantage, a 12. Second one, that's a two. And a three, so they both fail. Oh, that's really shitty damage. Okay. Uh, so first one takes 13, second one takes 12. No, no, no. So it's it's 20. It's that damage all together. It's lightning and radiant. Oh, nice. So 25. It's, yep. Does okay, the priest really take good. it? No. Um, sorry, it's, I messed something up here. I'm trying to uh, fix that. Okay. Oh, stop. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> um. So twenty five. Twenty five, and then the priest con saving throw. Uh, disadvantage. That is a failure. So we'll take twenty five points of damage as well. Um. Okay. Um. If I'm, is the lightning strike one of my attack actions, or is that my entire action? I believe it's your entire action. It should say on there as an action. If not, then that's a. That's a Just as once on my per part. dawn. Uh, when you activate this ability, okay, here you go. As an action, I see it right there. Yeah. Um. So then. <clears throat> Bonus action. Okay. Rage. Nice. Uh, that's my turn. Lonely little lion man. Okay. All right. <laughs> At the end of your turn, Ajax, uh, the held action of the Kuatoa Archpriest is going to activate now. Seeing enemies or allies around him suffer subs uh, substantial damage, the uh, Archpriest held action was Mass Cure Wounds. That motherfucker. Um, as they are going to cast, surged. as they are going to cast mass cure wounds on the, um, uh, four. I don't think anybody's in range. At the four Kuatoa that are injured, including himself. So each what the fuck? Loser. It's not complete. <laughs> Fucking enemies can't heal themselves. Only fucking player characters can heal themselves. This is bullshit. It's the rules. Yep. That... Enemies can't use counter spell. They can't revive, and they can't heal. Everyone knows this. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. They also can win. <laughs> yep, that's the big okay. one. Okay. <laughs> so what the fuck is going on? The only thing they're allowed to do is die. Okay, all right. Barely injured, barely injured, injured. I didn't heal this guy, too. That's so funny. <laughs> He's dead. Okay, I'm going to delete him. 
It's a power <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> okay. All right, you can see thing. all of these creatures. They regain a fair bit of their composure and stamina and health as they are ready to fight on. Okay. Uh, that we move to Cecily. Hey, Carousella, how do you feel about hurting the ones that are dedicated to your cause? Like, is this like Don't a lost thing? Okay. They will no longer be dedicated to the cause. Um. So we're so banking on them staying around when this fight is over and leveraging Actually, yeah. that. <laughs> All right. That makes what I want to do more difficult, but I will oblige. Um, okay. So can't use that. Can't use that. Can't use that. All right. Lightning bolt it is. Um, <laughs> Boop. Uh. Okay. Meh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How? Lightning bolt. Imagine I described it really cool at all. It happens. Sick. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Right, and I'll uh, go ahead and empower it as well. Ooh, but it was already quite good. DC Damn. 16. Uh, okay. The whip will succeed the Archpriest. Um, will use a reaction to cast Absorb Elements. Uh, and then we'll also make the deck save. I didn't Which do the fucking hold up. Is a failure. So it'll still take. Um nice. Oh wow. That's a chunk of chunk of damage. Alright, so yeah, there you go. An empowered lightning bolt for 40. Okay. Um so the whip succeeds, uh, and we'll take half, so we'll take twenty. And then the archpriest is going to cast absorb elements on itself, um, to oh, take half damage. Can't for do that either. Twenty points of damage. Also. Still a good, breaking all of the rules. good bit of damage. Uh, this creature, the Archpriest, is actually blood, bloodied right now. He's all right. Fucking die. <laughs> um, I will bonus action cantrip. Chill him. Um, I'm going to use Chill Touch because the extra thing on Chill Touch is that if I hit them, they cannot regain hit points until the start of Cecily's next turn. So I'm gonna do that on the Archpriest. Attack roll. A 23 to hit. Okay, that hits. Cool. All right. Nine points of chill. Nine <laughs> points of damage. Still up. All right. Get chilled. But he can't heal. Mm -hmm. Grr. Guys, I just want to just want to bring this up. Uh, Carousel is the only one out of our party left in this turn order. They're gonna get some belief. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <I'm let. laughs> yeah. Okay. Unless. Kuwato. I did. I did what I could. I feel like that one feels like he wants to stay put. Yeah, he just wants to stay <laughs> back there, honestly. <laughs> Oof. Oof. You know, he's its action to dash. And Cecily, as it's like running up to you, you just conjure that big bolt of lightning. You can see it's like running up to you, like almost like foaming in the, the mouth. Um, as, as it says. <laughs> Give me, your one, what? give me your what? Give me your powers. Give me your powers. It oh, says that in undercommon, though, so you don't understand. But it wants your lightning. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit. <laughs> it wants your lightning. All right. Your lightning. <laughs> That's its turn. It doesn't have anything else it can do. Uh, Carousel, wow. it's your turn. Oh, so Cecily's so just it. uncomfortable. Yeah, Cecily saw a. <laughs> A fish man that is a little bit shorter than her run 
incredibly quickly at her. <laughs> <laughs> like that scene in Get Out. Where it's <laughs> God. <laughs> okay. Um. Yes. I believe all the measurements work for this. Yes. Cool. Uh I don't know how risky I want to be. And I, the answer I think is not very. Um. So I, from my little spot, so I don't hurt people. I don't want to hurt. Uh, I want to cast Dawn uh, to 30 foot, yeah, 30 foot radius and 40 foot height. <laughs> oh, uh, so yeah, it should be able to get at least Top Boy here and Archbishop. And yeah. Um... That's right, you don't want to hurt your... your... Dawn is 30? Yes. And so I'll need con saves from them. And... for chow. Did that even fucking... no. <sighs> ah! Okay. And she'll also, because I always forget the shit, uh, antibiotic the priest as well. Okay. Uh, constitution. This light is sunlight. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Okie dokie. So, just on the two there, um, the archpriest, uh, go ahead and roll the antibiotic. Okay, it'll fail. And then the monitor, the monitor will succeed. So it'll take half. Um, so the monitor takes 12. The archpriest will take 24, but the archpriest is just barely standing. Cool. Um, and she will... <laughs> she will just be looking at the archbishop just the whole time. Um... But yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Sounds good to me. Hold on. Actually, wait. She'll also. Uh, no, I don't want her to move. Never mind. Yeah. Okay. This Kuatoa. Run up to Bianca. Nah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Does he get me? <laughs> it's a natural one. <laughs> He's running too I fast. The net flies right past this you. Time. <laughs> oh, you. It's like overshot. It's like right behind her. <laughs> Could you like run into the net? Maybe help him out. Um, her tail's under the net. Oh. Uh, he will still spear attack you. Okay. <laughs> spear. That's an eight. <laughs> he misses. <laughs> okay. Nice. Poor guy. Kuatoa. We'll also run at Cecily. <laughs> also <laughs> screaming about, give me your powers! <laughs> okay. She's not happy <laughs> right now. <laughs> Kuatoa whip. We'll run at Ajax. Oh, yeah? Um, it's it. going to make two attacks. Uh, it's going to make one with the pincer staff. You can see it, the, the staff lunges up towards your neck as it tries to, almost like a collar. Yeah. Um, that is a 21 to hit. Mm, yep, that hits. Uh, six points of piercing damage, and I need you... Uh, is that half? Um, Yes, it is. Uh, so three points of damage. And then you will also be restrained. You're grappled. What? Sorry, you're grappled. Yeah, as oh the pincer God. lunges at your neck, you can see that those like there are sharp fangs on the end of the pincers that like pierce into your neck. And as you try and move or strain in a specific direction, um, you can feel an incredible amount of tension and flesh begin to tear. Um, what an asshole. So, um, you will need to use your action to escape from it. Um, and then it Ooh. is going to, as it's pinched, as the pincer is around your neck, it is going to reach towards your side and it's going to try and take like, a big bite out of your side. Hey, you, uh, you gross, dude. Normal. Oh, miss, miss. That's a natural one. You just Ooh. sort of sidestep out of the way as it chomp. 
That's unfortunate because I'm gonna repost that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Evans breath spear. That hits. That's Twenty. Mm -hmm. uh, let's roll that damage plus an extra D six from Zealot. I believe. Just let me make sure. Divine Fury. Yes, it's an extra D six plus four. Uh, plus my superiority dice. Mm -hmm. Which is a D eight. So that's a that's a forty one. Yep. Okay, okay. <laughs> is this still alive? And then minus seven. Okay, with that, it is dead. Okay, because so can, can as it goes to bite, Ajax grab its head, snap that staff that's around his neck, and take the pointy end and just <laughs> jab it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Funk. Mm -hmm. You do. Okay, okay. And then just look at the, the monitor. Okay, sounds good. You look at the monitor. However, with that, we do get to the end of the initiative. And with that, we now need to count our belief stacks. Okay, five, ten. Um, those ones do not count because they are currently not believing in the Archpriest. So we got 15 total. Oh, nice. 16, 17, 18, 19 stacks of belief. Once I buy them. An all new Kia Sorento. <laughs> be, it's like arcade like laws where it's just gonna be like, you know, a little like ring candy. That's it's like it. those, those games you get like McDonald's. It's like okay. the Monopoly one. Move it to the top of the turn order. Sunni, it is your turn. Burger. Sune. Sune. Oh, take a picture. Sunni, you there? Look at this photograph. Look at this graph. I mean, I I'm haven't... sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. I am here. Can I get an update on where yeah, exactly sure. everything is? That would be very helpful. It's in the chat. Thank you. It's in the you chat, got a monitor right on either side of you. Five okay. feet. And the bishop oh. guy, priest guy, who is very... Close oh, yeah, 20 feet death. away. Near death. Okay, um, I don't want to fuck with attack of or opportunity attack, so I'm gonna misty step again, um, just right next to the priest. And with, uh, as soon as he actually, just for, for, uh, flavor, I want to misty step my blade inside of his chest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, sounds good. All you gotta do is hit, and he'll be dead. <laughs> Hell yeah. Sorry, my character, she's got to load again. No, you're fine. This is so dumb. You never <laughs> play D&D on your phone. <laughs> Stop. Well, thanks, Joe. <laughs> um, 17? Oh, oh well, that was a 7. I thought that was a 1. Never mind. <laughs> God. I was yeah, like, you're really, Jesus Christ, really okay. Is. That'll hit, though. Wait, actually, okay, no, cool. he's gonna... Uh... He's used all his reactions. Yeah, I was just about to... I was looking where he was at on the turn order. So, yep, yep, he has no reaction left then. Boom. So, yeah, I just want to misty step, sword pointed out with it, where I appear right below him into his chest. Splat. He's dead. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, you also say and... you might want to move because otherwise you're going to take damage. Okay, then I will go ahead and move away from where I'm going to take damage. Yeah, um, <laughs> yep. I will just head south, I guess, and then if I can get within range to hit something else, I'll hit something else. If not, I'll throw my moon blade at it. Okay. Um. Yeah. Where is the? Where am I taking damage from? The circle the big thing. shiny thing. Yeah, oh, I that's see. Dawn. 
Oh, okay, I see. I'm, I'm with it. Okay. Then, yeah, I'll back up a little bit, um, and then I'll just toss my Moonblade attack at the one... Um, can I, the one near Cecily. Okay. Um... Sixteen. Um, that hits. Okay. Um, nine plus uh, one, so ten. <laughs> okay, ten points of damage. Alrighty. Uh, the one standing in front of Cecily is still standing, but it is definitely. Oh, whoa. Yes, it looks a little funny. <laughs> it exploded. The take backs. It is wounded. <laughs> okay, and that's it. Okie dokie. Alrighty. Sunni, with that, we go to 20. Um, this Kuotoa is dead, and then we move to the Kuotoa whip here. Um, that is going to move towards um, Caracilla, actually. Um, and is going to, since it tried to sacred flame you earlier, it, it is actually attacked me. If that changes anything, it hasn't tried jack on me. Oh, it was Bianca. It was Bianca. Okay. Then it's going to stay right here. 25, 20, 40. I just get more. You can see it's in range. Yeah, but what is the range? Oh my god, that's so trash. Why does it not tell me? <laughs> Bambi. <laughs> 30 feet. Okay. It will actually move just a, just a wee bit. Go move right there. So that way it is within range of three of you. Um, and you can see instead of running towards you and attacking you, the whip is going to raise up its staff once again, cling it down towards the ground, and it is it's going to cast Bane on Bianca, Carasilla, and Suni. So pretty much Bane is the opposite of Bless, where each one of you will subtract a D4 from each one of your rolls, saving throws, and attack rolls for the next minute or until he drops concentration. Gross. Oop. Okay. Bane suck. With that, we come to the 20 losing initiative ties torn order marker. Oh. As all the Kuatoa look around, they can see their numbers are thinning and they need to make a decision. As they reach out into the ether, they will summon the Baylor. Um, it's 15. They're one short of 20, which I'm really sad about. Mm. No shame. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> oh. Um. It's like using redemption points on your redemption cards at gas stations. Yeah. I guess it's. Another question is how long do I want to drag this out for? That's, that's another really <laughs> valuable question. Um, here's where we want to have comment for another hour or two. Uh, that's why we're not going to use. That's why we're not going to do one thing. <laughs> Instead, we're going to do something that is pretty good right now. What they're going to do is they are going to spend a combination of three points to heal all allies by five. So everyone on the board here that is a Kuatoa will heal by five points. Plus five, unharmed. Plus five, unharmed. Okay. Then on top of that, they're going to spend an additional 15 points for a total of 18 to give all allies a plus three bonus to attack and damage rolls until the next 20. Damn. Okay. 
They hit. More. Yeah. <laughs> do we hit different? So that means now they are. They're, they're, off. they're at <laughs> one point. <laughs> Maybe they'll get a net on Bianca. <laughs> They're gonna keep trying. Okay. <laughs> Bianca, it's your turn. Your okay. Um. Uh, well, she's gonna take care of the one in front of her. I'm gonna attack it twice. So it's minus minus four or minus a d4. Minus a d4. Okay. Good. Um. That's much better. So okay. Besides the minus, the first hit is a twenty. Second hit, it's a thirty. Um, and then here's for the negative for the first roll. So Still 20 hits. minus 2, 18. Still negative hits. for the 13. Definitely misses. Nine. Yeah. Okay. So first hit. Do 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 do. Reaper's toll. Do 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 do. And then we'll add the eight ice damage. Nice doing work. Okay. Uh, wow. So uh, that's the total. Oh, he's, he's gone. Okay, yep. good. Um, he's very dead. Okay, cool. Um, Almost double his hit points. I don't. Bonus actions. I don't know if there's one. You know, this could be kind of fun. I could. Nah, we'll do it later. Um, she's just going to come back. This one. Yeah, maybe we will, for funsies. Okay, so we're gonna do a blood curse once I fucking find it. Is it a reaction? I think it might be a reaction. Blood curse. Yep, never mind. I'll wait. That's my turn. Okay, alright, sounds good. I'll wait for another one. Well, technically... I have my reaction back, and it, it's waiting for someone to... When a creature you see within 30 feet drops to zero HP, you can use your reaction to have that creature make one weapon attack against the target of your yeah. choice within its range. And if I amplify it, it can move up to half its speed. How fast are they? 30 feet. Nah, not worth it. Okay. I'll wait. <laughs> I'll wait. All right. That's our turn. Prone whip, not doing anything. Monitor. We'll move towards Ajax. Flanking, so it is going to get uh, D6 plus three to both of these attacks. Um, so, one D6 plus three. Okay, first one Ajax is a 19 to hit. Um, that's exactly my armor class. That hits. Mm -hmm. Uh, then that will be 16 points of damage, halved to 8. Okay. Second attack. D6 plus 3. You get 23 to hit. Plus 8 points of damage. Wow, that was really bad. Uh, halved to 4. Then a bite attack. Chomp, chomp. Uh, 19 to hit again. It's three on the damage. Nine points of piercing damage, halved to five on the bite. Okay. That's their turn. Alton is going to take, uh, at the one that just hit you, because uh, that is the more injured one, is going to take three shots at that one. Uno. Hit. Damage. Oh, that was really bad. Eight points of piercing damage. Ew. Damage. No attack. 15 to hit. Ooh, actually, no. Oh, that hits the monitors. That does not hit the monitors. That'll be a miss. Uh-oh. He's choking. And then... Never mind, 25. 13 points of damage. Okay, 21 points of damage total. Two arrows. Bop, bop. 21 points of damage. Okay. That's the end. Alton's turn. Monitor. Same thing, Ajax. All right. Yep. You're getting the, you're getting the gauntlet. Uh, seventeen to hit, which is a miss. Miss. Uh, repost. Okay. Uh, oh. 
Okay, that hits. 24 to hit. All that damage. 23. Okay. Uh, and then this. Ooh. 33. Okay. Yep. Uh, so then the second one is a 20. So it does take the damage. Then the second attack okay. is a 23 for mm -hmm. 14 points of damage, half to 7. Then we have a. I didn't add the thing. Oops. Uh, okay, d6 plus 3, and I'll add it to that total. Yeah, that's plus 9, so that definitely hits. Uh, 24 to hit on the bite. And then it'll be 9 halved to 5 for the bite. So 5 points of damage. Okay. Was there damage before that? Um. Yeah, 14 points. Half to seven. seven. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, moving on from there. This Kuatoa is paralyzed still. Ajax, it's your turn. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to hit this guy. Uh, right mm -hmm. here. Okay. Uh, you know, let's just, you know, it's just easy peasy lemon squeezy. Let's go ahead and hit that guy. Uh, control that damage. Plus my D6. Plus four. Okay. For Zalot. So that is 30. 30. He is dead. Splat. Awesome. I'm going to stab up through its face, remove the spear, turn around, and without even. Ajax isn't really facing him. He's just going to turn around and stab back. Uh, nice guy. Boom. That hits. Yep. Boom. 24. Okay. Let me make sure. Let me let me read something really quick. Um, I think you only get that zealot damage once per turn. It's while you're raging. The for okay, your first creature you hit on. Uh, yeah, I had to read that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so twenty four. Mm -hmm. Looking death. real rough. Yep. I. Fuck it, yeah. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> fucking action surge. <laughs> okay. Why not, dude? Uh, Give me that. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna just, you know, boom. Okay, twenty-four hits. Bop bow. Yeah, he's dead. Twenty-five. Awesome. Uh, and then barely injured, injured, unharmed. Run over here. Okay. I'm gonna stab this guy that's injured right in front of uh, Sessa. Okay. That hits. Tell Gosh. you right now, he's definitely dead. <laughs> Twenty-seven. Yep. Okay. So as uh, as he stabs Cecily. that guy, he's gonna remove it and see that guy by Cecily. He's gonna turn and just throw his spear across the battlefield. <laughs> so Cecily's just gonna see the spear go <laughs> right through the back. Like the tip comes out the other end, and then Ajax is there to pull it out as it just drops. Okay. All right. With that, Cecily. Ah, uh, reaction. Gonna use it. Nice. Because he's right there. <laughs> All in puppet. Uh, so he's going to make a swing attack. I don't, even have, I don't even have to amplify it. Beautiful. He's gonna attack this guy. So he gets back up after being stabbed. Mm -hmm. And attacks his buddy. Okay, is it just his attack? Yep, just a, a one weapon attack. Okay, so. Oh, it doesn't let me do it if he's incapacitated. Okay. Oh, that sucks. All right. What do you mean he's incapacitated? It's not very friendly to my feature. Okay, there we go. All right. Spear, so it's gonna go ahead and be the same thing that it was before. D6 plus three, because that's so he's still under that. 18. That'll hit. Nice. Plus three extra damage. So eight points of damage total. <laughs> Think the spear stabs into him, and then the Kuatoa goes limp. That was fun. Okay. Alright. Alright. Cecily, it is your turn. So first, at everything that just happened by <laughs> paint from her, Cecily is going to go, jeez, 
Um, and then <laughs> she is just gonna like calmly turn to the right and grab the one on the face with shocking grasp. Mm-hmm. Uh, this will be my first thing. Does a 16 hit? That hits. Cool. All right. 14 points of lightning damage when I grab his face. Nice. He is dead. Sweet. Just shake him a bit. Drop him. And Fish then friend. she's just going to run over here and bonus action quick and spell. Just do the same thing on the whip in front of Bianca. Okay. Getting up close and personal with these fishes. I'm going to use a point of luck. Because I'm just going to assume a natural two ain't too good. <laughs> hey, 24 to hit. That'll do it. Okay. And send for and damage. Then... What do you 23. have? 23. That was good. Wow. Oh, 21 points of damage. There we go. 20 because I, I subtracted two initially because I didn't hit the three in enough time so there you go it all it all added up together all right um, yeah he's looking rough splat all right and uh, she has no action economy left but she'll just kind of keep smacking at him <laughs> okay nice with that Carousel it is your turn the only monitor or the only uh, Kuatoa that is left alive that is hostile is this one right here yeah, um, so just, she will be holding, um, a psychic lance, just if, I guess he doesn't, um, do what she says, but she will just turn, because it's better to have things alive to tell you, sorry, you know, um, strategies here. Uh, so she will turn to her as it's being, obviously, smacked on by Cecily, um, and she will just say, now will you make the Maya's decision and nail like the other two? Okay. Uh, make an intimidation check. Sick. Okay. Um, I don't think I get... Do I get bonuses with intimidation? This is my real question. Probably won't matter. That's a 24. Um, what do I think I do? I do not. So yeah, 24. Okay. Um... Let me double check one thing here real quick. Okay, all right, cool. I just wanted to make sure something. Okay, with a 24, I would say the whip would look towards the other two. The big slimy eyes just kind of looking back and forth. Nasty. And then it would simply take a knee and kneel. Yep. And with that, Caracilla as we exit out of combat, Caracilla, you now have a small army of three <laughs> Kuatoa <Hell yeah. laughs> at your service. Hell yeah, we're gone. We need to retitle this, How to Start a Cult. <laughs> cult time, baby. As yeah. the five of you take stock, you breathe, look around. It seems as though Immediately, the Kuatoa have been dealt with. You have three followers on your side that will follow you even after suggestion wears off. The Kuatoa will go where you say. They will do what you say. And that means that in the next combat encounter all of you experience, provided these three are with you, all of you will be able to benefit from belief as well. Ooh. Now cult granted, type, cult type. you're Wait, only this... getting you're only getting three points around. <laughs> which we means priest it like the priest did. So yeah, you need to get yeah, Do I, I get mean... the priest radius? Wait, can guys... we promote one of them to a priest? You guys aren't Kuatoa. <laughs> But yeah, can right? we can make one of them a priest. Won't right? they believe no, really hard that no, they're, cool. <laughs> they're born that way. They're created that way to be able to amplify faith. No. Uh, Unless yeah, you run into like, <laughs> Okay. So you regroup with Alton and you ready yourselves to head out of the city 
into the drow outpost to make your last rest before heading deeper into the Underdark and hopefully out for good. And that is where we're going to go ahead and end tonight's session. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed. I know I did. Um, that is... What the hell? That is it for today's session. Um, but be sure to tune in tomorrow for the continuation of the Tales of Everend as we finish out downtime. Be sure to tune in on Saturday for the continuation of Isles as we enjoy the city of Yule in the Astral Sea for some Christmas time vibes. Um, or on Sunday for buried time. Um, and of course, next Tuesday for the continuation of Salamander Coast. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>